nakita ako. Sabi ko, alam ko yung restaurant na yun eh. Yeah. Ano to bro? Tell us about this. Um, but yeah. I think some something to be excited for. <laughs> Baka naman. Nah, nah. But then, yeah, crazy. Grabe si bahay, no? Grabe. Baka naman, nah, nah. pwede mo kausapin. <laughs> Wala na yun. Kabalbin na yun. <laughs> Good day, everyone. Another episode of the Upper Box Podcast. My name is Justin and welcome to the show. Coach Pao, maayong buntag sa iyong tanah. Um, yes. <laughs> I don't know how to speak. Um, Hindi, kasi nandito yung girlfriend ko ngayon. My girlfriend is Cebuana. Cebuano, but bro, um excited about this guest though. Uh, oh yeah. Why? Like, why? <laughs> Hindi, kasi ano, no. napakabisaya lang ako. Kasi, kasi girlfriend ko is here this week. Then, a few weeks ago, I went to Cebu. Tapos, I went to this restaurant. Tapos, pagkita ko online, yung restaurant na yun was on one of the social media groups uh, ng San Beda. Tapos, like, uy, bayit nandito si ano. Yung guest natin today, may kasama siya tapos oh. nakatakip yung picture. So, oh, pare, ano yun, no? Para kala mo showbiz. Oo oh, nga eh. So, kala mo showbiz eh. <laughs> we'll Ayon. talk about that. We'll oh, talk yeah, about pero, what, anong meron doon. And how would I describe this guy? This guy was a pivotal guy in the, the Red Lions for the past few seasons. And I'm excited to talk to him. He He's been a Red Lion through and through. Go, Pao. What can you say about this guy? Yeah. I'm excited about, you know, um, getting to know uh, more about his story. He comes from a, well, a known school back in Cebu. Um, mm-hmm. I actually um, watched, parang I actually watched his NBTC game against, against San Beda. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yun na naalala ko lang, naalala ko lang, uy, uh, sila to, naging mag-teammate. <laughs> uh, pero, um, yeah, I'm excited about him. Uh, I've seen him develop as a player and develop as a person. Um, and heard, never actually had a I had an opportunity to really conversate with him outside of now. But I've always heard good things about this dude. Um And yeah, I'm just excited to really uh, get to know this dude right now. So yeah, Danny. Yeah, Chaka, you know, from what I've been hearing, this guy isn't just uh, an athlete. He's the epitome of a student athlete. Sobrang sipag daw na itong mag-aral. So I'm really excited to talk to him. So... Magaling siya naman sa akin. Oo nga eh. Kasi di ba last episode, kausap natin si Kyle. Pumasok daw sa IT, ano? sa IT Maybe. class. Tapos, so, sobrang tatalino daw sa math. Tapos, kayo ni Kyle, parang, hindi nyo na alam pa, nakasagot no? yung <laughs> question. Anyway. Anyway, no other. Welcome, Mr. Alex Viser. Alex, welcome to the show. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Hey. Thanks, Thanks Alex, for coming over. And, uh, mukhang vacation is, ano na? Yeah. yeah. Vacation <laughs> mode? Fresh, Fresh from, from the, the beach. the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Buti, yeah, buti me- messy, messy apartments so I'm gonna keep this with the green screen and everything grabe naman yung apartment mo ang, ang ano ang ganda <laughs> beach side no beach side pare LU pala LU L- ako huwag mong sinisimulan niyang kwentong LU na yan uh, I've seen Pero... enough of your interviews to mention it <laughs> nako mukhang matatanong natin yan pero Yeah, dude, sobra thankful that you got to come over. We've been trying to get you and we've been trying to fix this schedule of both for both of us, for all three of us, para matuloy ito. And I'm just excited to really um, get this over with. But before we, you know, um, we get into your career as a Red Lion, siguro let's start it with the basics. Um, how did your basketball career start? Like, How did your basketball journey start? Uh well actually I started pretty late. Um uh I'll make a first like parang lore, like beginning story. My dad first made a basketball ring uh back in the Magata um in our house. But my dad never played basketball. So he mm-hmm. put the ring on grass. And it's not just like the flat grass, it's carabao grass. Mm-hmm. So 
when we had a ball, it was flat, so I couldn't dribble it. And mm -hmm. so instantly, I hated basketball because of it. <laughs> I hated it growing up. Uh, everyone would keep playing during recess. I never touched uh, basketball. I, I played table tennis growing up, a lot of table tennis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started because my brother's best friend told me to try out. Mm -hmm. And when I tried out, I was wearing PE pants and waffle mm -hmm. running shoes because I had no gear, zero gear. Mm -hmm. So like humble beginnings pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I just thinking about I'm just imagining you like were you a big kid already when you were a kid? Oh yeah. Um I think when I first started out I was 14 and mm -hmm. I was six two or six three at the time. Like mm -hmm. I had a massive growth spurt from uh first year to second year. Back then I I uh back then I was sent in K to twelve but so first year to second year. Uh by the time I was second year I was six two already. Six two and a half, something like that. Massive growth spurt. Wow. And uh yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I was just imagining him like if you are playing as a kid, you're a big kid already. Uh, for like table tennis, and I Yeah, actually, no, <laughs> I was I wasn't that good, honestly. <laughs> just using the length, I was yeah, <laughs> just but, tall. That was my only thing. <laughs> but so this you were this was already in um, Sacred Heart. Or no, no, no. In... This, this was in Dumaguete. So um, my first ever basketball team I joined for my school, um, the sister school of Don Bosco, if you've heard of Don Bosco. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was um, uh, Catherine Cittadini school. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a you know small school. And then I played. And then that's when um, Coach Mike, who is um, Calvin Oftana's head coach, shout out to him, in mm -hmm. Aksat before he came to San Beda saw me play and talked to my parents afterwards and said, oh, he shouldn't stay here in Dumaguete. He, he can like play in Cebu. So that's when I went to Sacred Heart um, mm -hmm. after like half a year of playing basketball. Yeah. So how old were you, were you when you went to Sacred Heart? Still 14. Still 14, yeah. Um, going into 15. And I remember my skills were so bad. We had like this basic drill when I went to Sacred Heart, part of the tryout, where you just have to like, uh, you know how there's the half court, right? And you just have to follow the line of the half court, the edges, mm -hmm. the out of bound mm -hmm. lines. And then there's mm -hmm. like uh, in and out dribbles. We call it chill drill. In and out mm -hmm. dribbles behind the back. And I couldn't even do an in and out dribble. I didn't know how. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> throughout the tryout, I just kept getting more and more devastated. Now they're teaching me how to shoot a free throw. And the tournament in Dumaguete, I was already playing and I had a lot of game time because I was, you know, really tall. Mm. But all my stats were like 15 rebounds and like eight points because I just keep missing next to the basket and I can't make a single shot. And I just keep getting my own rebound. So yeah. <laughs> and then my, my free throw percentage that time was 0% for the entire tournament. And I had a lot of free throws. Like I was horrible, basically. <laughs> so you were like inadvertently stat padding. Yeah, basically, I was just like do doing a Westbrook pretty much <laughs> every game, but no assists either. <laughs> yeah, your stat padding. Wow. Okay, way to be a team player. Uh, <laughs> but no. Nah. So okay, you were already you were you were going through this um this whole vast change. Um, I'm sure it was tough for you, um, moving from Dumaguete to Cebu, even though. Still in the Visayas region, but still, you're going away from home. Yeah. First time going away from home at a young age. And at the same time, readjusting to a new new environment and trying to learn this sport. How did you react to that when you first got into Sacred Heart? Like how did how was how was that process up until such time that you know you were able to type a panel, major nakapag improve? Uh, yeah, funny you should mention that. Um, cause I stayed in the dorm mm -hmm. and my first time in the dorm, there were the seniors by that, uh, before they graduated, you know, they had to play, um, NBTC and Palo Europa mm -hmm. before they graduated. And the seniors in the dorm were like, I was new, I was young, I'm, I look foreign. Mm -hmm. So they were like, you know, doing the typical senior rookie initiation teasing thing. 
And I remember after like I think the third day that I was there, I was like up on the rooftop of the dorm just crying. I was like, I want to go home. Because <laughs> oh. man, it was hard because I couldn't do the drills. I I actually got brought down to because I was training with the seniors, and the seniors are like 16, 17, 18 years old, and I was 14. Yeah. So they brought me down to the passerelle team B. Mm-hmm. Okay, just wow. just so I could improve there. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, from from there, like uh, from there, that's when they started really like really developing me. Because that's the good thing about uh, Sacred Art is that they really develop their players. And so I went I went through all those really basic drills where you know you know that you put your coin here in your finger when you shoot free throws to help you keep your hands straight mm-hmm. and all that. Like yeah, the most basic of the basic drills. I had to start from zero. Mm-hmm. And and of course, you know, that really helped you develop and was there like a moment where you're like you felt oh shit this is is this how they play basketball in Cebu? I say Cebu basketball is very physical, very fast. Yes. Yeah. It's, like that's we, that's the trademark. Yeah, what we borderline do, we say it's ano eh, parang nakapeste but it's good in a way. Yeah. Let's just say it's borderline dirty. Okay. <laughs> Cebu basketball is is very, very physical. And I realized that in the first tournament we joined, we played against this um big guy as well. And it was my first time playing against guys that were above six foot, mm-hmm. actually. Because all my teammates and um there was one guy, I think, one other guy in the entire tournament in Dumagete who was like six one. Mm-hmm. And I was six two. Because this is under 14, like you don't really see tall kids over there mm-hmm. and then there was this one guy where it was just i was just getting elbows and i was closing out on him and then he would grab my hand and hit himself with it and i got a technical foul for the first time <laughs> and i was like what's happening man i didn't even know what a technical foul was at the time and i was i was so confused and uh-huh. with me being so confused i have this like this face when i'm confused and I, I walked towards the ref to ask, and the ref like gave me another technical because he got scared Aww. of me. <laughs> like, I got thrown out of the game. That was my like that was like my first tournament game there, and I got thrown out like in the second quarter or third quarter, something like that. So I was like, I was so done with it so early on, man. I was so tired. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Jo- what is this sport I'm joining? Like, <laughs> want to go home? Man. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. of course. Yeah, dude, like that that's super funny because um now you're you're pretty chill with, with well of course he especially this last season, just going a little bit forward, but you're pretty chill with the refs overall compared to uh the rest of the team. You don't get bothered as much, but I guess that's training from Cebu. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> Also, also it's, um, it's pretty much Coach Yuri as well. Coach Yuri doesn't like it if you complain to the refs too much. Um, yeah. He basically just says, like, control what you can control. Like, so. Oh, okay. so, okay, so, of course, you know, you, you had your struggles in Cebu. But when did you realize that, okay, things are getting better, I'm developing? Wh- where, when was that point that you were able to establish yourself in the team? Uh, there's an exact game where I can tell, mm-hmm. but, uh, before that, leading up to the next year in Cebu, I would like, I remember that I would call my mom after a certain practice, be like, oh, mom, I did so good in this practice. I like had two layups in the entire practice during the five on fives. And then, you know, that was so big for me. I like, oh, I was able to make a layup. That was like massive for me at the time already. But in my first season there, cause I played, uh, four seasons in Sasafi. For high mm-hmm. school and in my first season it was basically not nothing special because it was a stacked team like almost all the players that i knew there basically went to manila uh my one of my best friends now josh sinclair you know came to nu and became gila's youth and uh that was the, that was the batch of sacred heart at the cebu that won the nbtc championship mm-hmm. against san beda oh okay. yeah little fun fact and i, I didn't make that lineup in the end mm-hmm. but yeah it was a stacked team so my first year was like you know not so eventful but what the, the game that you're mentioning where i really noticed was the game three of the sasafi championship because throughout the entire tournament i was just doing basically what i do now 
mm-hmm. in uh, what I did last season, just screen, uh, rebound, play defense. Mm-hmm. But that game, I don't know what it was, but I was getting so many drop passes and offensive rebounds that I popped off for the first time scoring in double digits, and I got 19 points. Wow. And I think we beat the, the team in the championship by a lot at that point already because we were playing so good. But that was like the most I've ever scored up to now, mm-hmm. actually. And uh, yeah, that was when I realized like, oh, but it, like, you know, potential. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. So, and and when that when that happened, like, tuloy tuloy na rin yung confidence mo. Uh, well, you know what? It's a bit hard because with my style of play, I de- I I really depend on drop passes. I never make my own baskets unless I get offensive rebounds, mm-hmm. and that doesn't happen all the time. So, I think all the way till I graduated, um, except for my last year, all my points were just offensive rebounds and putbacks and drop passes and finishing and so it really depends per game but i didn't i wasn't like averaging like crazy numbers or anything but in my last year my senior year i played really well especially in nbtc tournament uh the regional one and we lost that year but luckily they decided before that we started that they were going to take the two finalist teams to go to manila Mm -hmm. and even though we lost we were still able to go and it was sayang because um, I heard, I heard from my coach and the tournament coaches themselves. Now, if we won that championship game, I would have been named the regional MVP of that tournament, mm-hmm. and that would have been my first, you know, my first award ever for anything mm-hmm. basketball related. So sayang, but you know, instead, great. instead, I got I got named together with um, two other players to be in the All Star game in Manila. Okay. So that was a big, like, you know, I didn't get this, but I got that. One door closes, another one opens. So, yeah. That's true. Mm. Well, aside from that, before we go into, you know, your final year, what would you say is the, your most memorable physical play in Cebu? <laughs> <laughs> there's, gonna, there's a lot, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will never forget that, like, that thing happened to you in Cebu. Oh, to me, you know what? I'm I don't receive so many like physical plays. I'm a very chill player. I don't I don't like hurting people. Um, but there was this one. There was this one. I I think it was a regional uh, elimination game. I forgot which team or whatever. But there was this one guy in another team that he was hurting my teammates so much. It was a big guy, so mm-hmm. he's he's my position. But rebounds, like I think three of them got cuts, and he was being so physical, and the refs weren't doing anything. So. It was my first time, you know, getting mad and mm-hmm. being physical. I was just running next to him. And mm-hmm. Sabai, like, when I was going here, I just uh, bam, hit him right <laughs> in the chest. But it was my first time, so it was so obvious. <laughs> the ref calls it a technical and sports for like. And then <clears throat> I think my mom was watching that game. Oh, mm-hmm. very good. Yeah. And my mom, my mom is um, Ilonga. So she told yeah. me right away after him, like, Langa, don't be like that. Oi. You're being you're being buguina like that. So I was like, okay, yes, mom. He said, don't ever do that again. Like, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but I, yung, yung, when you got hurt, was there like what was the worst when you got hit? I don't. I can't even tell, man. Like uh, I don't get hit often, and when I do, like I don't even like pay much attention to it. Um, I got hurt more in San Beda than oh. <laughs> than. <laughs> We'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. I know. Yeah, we'll I know. get into that. Yeah. <laughs> you know where we're going with that. Uh, yes. So, okay. So, f- your final year in in Sacred Heart. And now, you've kind of I made a name in the NBTC. Actually, I think, what did I my NBTC? Because a lot of... This is, really gives a lot of the provincial schools an, an opportunity to get recruited, to get noticed. So now, what school? What were you thinking on your final year, college-wise, and what schools were recruiting you? Um, after the NBTC, I did try out already for one school, which was UST, and I only tried out as a plus one for one of my teammates. 
uh, Travis Mantua, and we went to UST, and they didn't even show much interest in me at all. They were like more interested in him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was the first time I saw Justin Aranya. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time when I was looking, and I was like, oh my god, like, the bigs here are something else, man. That that guy is massive. <laughs> but you yeah. <laughs> He's, he's made massive, of so yeah. big ass dude. And then it was like full circle when we we played against each other in the bubble as well. But but yeah, um, after the NBTC, I didn't actually have any offers. Mm-hmm. Um, Adamson came to Cebu and tried out with our school, but they got uh, Colonia and they were interested in Velasco. Like my other teammates, my my all all my, I think like ten of our players in that batch went to Manila and played in UAP and NCAA teams. Mm-hmm. So, well, I didn't, like, even though I was, like, you know, all-star, I didn't get any, like, real interest. Um, it was just afterwards that um, my school scheduled, like, tryouts mm-hmm. for, um, I know that FEU wanted me to try out, NU wanted me to try out, um, some other schools as well. Um, but the first school that I did go to was San Beda. Mm-hmm. to try out and that's because while i was in sibupa um sila coach boyet boss jude jo- uh, coach joff cleopas who was our mm-hmm. uh, conditioning coach when i came in mm-hmm. and he's from cebu mm-hmm. they were there for a coaching clinic and that's when i met them sat down with them they had a talk with me but they said oh we'll watch you in mbtc and then you can come over afterwards if ever so yeah san is my first school that i actually really tried out in Got invited to try out him. So after San Beda, you still went to these other schools and tried no. out. No, no. I had I had it all lined up, man. Like I was gonna be in I was gonna be in Manila for two weeks, mm-hmm. and I spent the first three days in San Beda, and mm-hmm. I just like I don't know what it was, but I wanted to go to UAP, kind of. Mm-hmm. But after I tried out in San Beda. I just told my mom like, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try out in any other school. Like, I think, I think this is where I'm gonna be. Why? Like, I spent Why? those two weeks in San Beda. Like, um, maybe it was the fact that there were a lot of Bisaya guys as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the first people I met and talked to were very friendly Bisaya guys. Um, Calvin, Oftana, mm-hmm. got my bags, my luggage, because I came straight from the airport. They picked me up in the airport. Calvin Oftana got my luggage and brought it up to the dorm. Mm-hmm. Like that's Calvin of Tana, right? Mm-hmm. I know he yeah. wasn't Calvin of Tana yet at the time, but just the fact that he was my senior by a lot of years, and he was together with JB Bayou, mm-hmm. and they got my luggage and brought it all the way up to them. I was like, I was like, man, says, you know, these guys are like, you know, really welcoming. And I heard so many horror stories about trying out in Manila. Oh, you're gonna take these guys' positions. They're gonna be threatened. Blah blah blah. They're gonna hit you in practices. Blah blah blah. blah. But no, it, I didn't see that in San Beda. Maybe it was the fact that they were so secure in mm-hmm. themselves because it, you know, back to back champions. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So after that, like, I just decided, like, yeah, I wasn't even offered a spot. Like, mm-hmm. um, Coach Boyet talked to me after my three day tryout and I asked him to be straight up with me because I don't, I don't like it when, like, um, you're kind of like, yeah, you know, you can come here, but we're not sure, blah, blah, blah. I was like, Coach, uh, it's okay. Just be straight up with me. Yeah. And then he, he said, okay, we have bigs lined up for the next four seasons, mm-hmm. basically. So if you want to stay and if, if you want to um, play here, you won't, you're not guaranteed a spot until your last season. And that's if you improve a lot because I wasn't good enough at the time yet. Mm-hmm. So despite that, like just the fact that I asked, um, can I take IT here? And they're like, yeah. So I was like, and I liked it. I liked the environment. So I was like, okay. I'm happy with that. Okay. In love. <laughs> you must be the like. Na imagine kita sa loob ng computer class with Sir Alert. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tall oh, guy. Sir Alert. <laughs> that's my that's my favorite teacher right there. <laughs> Sir Alert. Yeah. Bro, you be he. I am sure he when he first saw you, he's like. <laughs> oh, I was the center of attention in his class, and he talks like so so funnily, right? Yeah. Like, and then he's something like, "Ooh, 
Bisser! Yeah, you know how he talks. <laughs> bro, oh, oh my god, what's know. this guy on, bro? Bro, I don't know if you if you've seen his car. He he used to drive an old Tamaro FX. And you know what he did? He bought like yun yung yun sa I don't know, sa mga biyahe na yung mga PUV, yung mga uh, biyahe ng Kiapo, biyahe Oh ano. yeah, the stickers. Bro, he would put that in front of his car. I would joke to the students when he got when he gets out of the out of uh, San Beda. Like, oh, moa, moa, moa. <laughs> when he goes to the game, oh, moa, moa, liga, moa. I <laughs> uh, like, love that game, man. So funny. Oh, dude, yeah, but so that so that's 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 uh that's your start of your journey, um, and it's a stack team and. What was your adjustment from, you know, again, another adjustment from Cebu to Manila? Um, what was that like, you know, and, and playing in San Beda? Yeah, that was that was uh, pretty crazy. Um, I was in Cebu for a while. Mm-hmm. Like, I was there for like four or five years since I was 14, basically. Right. Yeah. And then I graduated. I was 18 years old, turning 19. And then when I went to San Beda, I was staying in the dorm. That was my plan to just, you know, first be accustomed because it's bi- the big city, you know. Mm. Well, Cebu's a big city, but Manila's like something else, you know. And there were times now after practices, if I'm not going to be in the dorm, I'm in the internet cafe. Like, <laughs> you'll find me there. Any time of the day that you go there, I'm there. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm on YouTube because I didn't have my own Wi-Fi in the dorm yet. So I'm going to die of boredom. And uh, the signal is pretty mahina pa at the time in the mm-hmm. dorm. So I'd be in the internet cafe the whole day. And then there were times when I was new, pa, and I came out of the internet cafe. And then in my head, come walking out, I'm in Cebu. Mm-hmm. And then I, I step out of the internet cafe because that's the same thing I do back back there. Mm-hmm. I step out of the internet cafe. I'm like, where the hell am I? <laughs> right? It was like, I was like living a weird dream. It was crazy. And then straight back to the dorm and practice. It was like a routine, especially since when I came in, um, it was like, a, I think it was like a double summer for me because um, the semester here starts a bit later, right? Yeah. So yeah, a yeah. few months of that. Lots of um, screen time. <laughs> <laughs> what about Dota, Valorant? <laughs> uh, no. League, League of Legends, but I would play the strategy chess game. Oh, auto team, chess. Team, yeah, the auto chess game, team fight <laughs> tactics. That's that's my that's my jam. <laughs> yeah, real the true IT just in the internet cafe the whole day. <laughs> you, okay. you create, you know, you you create a friendship with the yung yung kuya na bantay, no? Like, yeah, yeah. He knows where you sit. Oh, he's an idol, you know. But sit kanto, no? Oh board. yeah, three of them. <laughs> C two, one liter, man. One liter, yes. The perfect athlete right there. <laughs> healthy as hell. Yeah, that you yeah. know, physical fitness, peak of physical yeah. fit. Don't but... be like me, kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe some of some of these kids are literally in a computer shop right now. Yeah, probably. Some of these kids might be literally in the shop right now and watching. Yeah. But, okay, so you were adjusting and all of that. How was practice? How was Manila basketball? How was your experience in Team B? Well, at the time, Team B practices was um, during summer, it's all one pool, Mm -hmm. right? And I was part of that pool for a little bit. But once it's uh, split, it was team practice was basically just mostly scrimmage, mm-hmm. um, some drills, plays, and then a lot, a lot of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. So it was it was good, the man. And you know, you, you get to like meet all your teammates, you know, being new and everything. And it was my first time playing with and against um, uh, FSA, uh, SFAs, FSAs, okay. yeah. <laughs> And that's where I met Eugene Toba, mm. Donald, Nunu, yeah. Eugene, Eugene, the the fly, the fly guy, the dunk master. 
Dude, Dunk Master Supreme. I wish he was able to play in the NCAA, you know, like for the full four years. Yeah, it's Bro. just hard. He played one one season, I think. Yeah, one yeah. season. Yeah, that. Eh. Mm. Bro, he, like, he wasn't the the like the FSA at that time when he played the full time season, right? For San Veda. I think they got him in preparation for uh, whenever Donald um, was finished. Mm. But just the fact that they cut it off right there, they stopped yeah. FSAs. Like, sucks. Saya, saya. Okay, I'm gonna ask you as a as a person, like as as a, as a player who experienced playing with FSAs, what are your thoughts about that issue, Naman? About playing. Um, with the NCAA banning the FSAs, like as a big man, because lagi siya yung big man siya sabi na oh mawawalan kayo na spot and all of that, like ha, on, on your part, like as a player has actually been in that position, what are your thoughts about it? Well, I thought it sucked that um, they they banned them because you know you improve so much playing against these guys. They're literally taller, mm-hmm. bigger, stronger than you, so you you find ways to be creative and to improve. The shooting more and everything, but at the same time, as a big man, the first one of the first things that came to my mind was like, I'm gonna get more game time, right? Mm-hmm. Especially me, I was trying to transition into four because of because of the FSAs, mm-hmm. but uh, when they were banned, na, that's when I, you know, I I could still play five, mm-hmm. um, when 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 needed, so. Blessing in disguise, actually. Um, I believe that they should still be there. Mm-hmm. And it's good for the community if they're there. But at the same time, the bigs get good exposure as well. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's a bit difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my take on that is like, I agree with everything you said. It's just that, you know, If you're gonna get get an FSA, get a good one, at least to justify not giving the Filipino players playing time. At least get a guy that's good. Because mm-hmm. hey, if you're if I'm the big if I'm the big guy if I'm a Filipino big guy, and I'm losing I I can't I'm losing my spot to the FSA. At least be good. Because if he sucks, parang mas nasasama pa yung loob ko. Yeah. Plus, if even if they're like you know not so good, there's still that notion that they have to be played, right? Because yeah. they you went through all of the effort. They they're coming into your country. They're yeah. sacrificing. They're they're also sacrificing. And then you basically have to play them, like you know. But still, you know, I wish I, the, our personal take is like they should really come back. But tamarin naman yung thoughts mo kasi yeah, more exposure. But yeah. Anyway. So, okay. The, how was the pandemic? Naman, nung tinamaan kasi, yeah, you you guys were already um planning. You guys were kind of winning, but yung 2019 natalo kayo. Um, what was the pandemic like when when that hit for you? Um. Well, before the pandemic, we played um, PCCL, I think. And that was after uh, the other guys left already. And I played there. And I, I actually, there was one game where all of our bigs were sick and I had my first starting game mm-hmm. as a third stringer because I remember Bayo was sick, Calvin was sick. So we didn't have any bigs. And I we played against UST, and that was when they had... Um, I forget the name. Solmay and Chabio. Mm. Ah, yeah. Yeah, and I started that game. That's my first first time ever starting for San Beda, Team A, basically. And we got to the finals in the PCCL and everything. I think my time, if, if my timeline is correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. And then in one of the other tournaments leading up to it, I sprained my ankle really, really bad. Mm-hmm. And Sakta, while I was recovering from that, the same week, COVID hit, and the, they made the announcement. So for me, it was good because it turns out that I tore something in my ankle, and I did, I couldn't play for six months. So it was for me, it was really good timing. Actually, I got to recover and not miss any, not miss anything mm-hmm. where the others, you know, 
not miss out on anything basically uh but yeah i remember i was i was in my room uh i already moved out of the dorm by that point and i was in my room and i was listening to the duterte's um announcement public advisory right mm -hmm. and as soon as he mentioned it i remember i was thinking oh like they're gonna close down airports i was like oh should i wait for coach Boyet to to make an announcement mm -hmm. uh, like if we can go home i didn't wait i was booking my ticket already <laughs> So, I don't want to get stuck in Manila, man. And it's a good thing I did because some of my teammates got stuck in Manila for months. Yeah, I was out of there like the two days after, and then the next day they closed on the airports. So I got to go home in Dumaguete. So I was just there the entire time. Mm. That's a good, yeah. good decision. That was a good decision. And the uh, and the cool thing about uh, in Dumaguete at least was, um, COVID didn't really hit there for the first six to eight months. Yeah, it was like widespread everywhere else, but Dumaguete had zero cases for the longest time, and then it was a bit late. So that entire time, I was still playing, mm -hmm. basically, sa mga side streets, the secret streets, secret <laughs> courts, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so I still got to play, but what my ankle was really bad. So after that, I I got it checked. I got an MRI, and then I. Turns out I tore something. Up to now, it still bothers me, mm -hmm. but but uh, I got to recover. I went I went to the rehab and everything. So yeah. Okay, that's good. I mean, <clears throat> I, honestly, like you're the first kind of positive. Imagine nagim positive pa yung sa sa pandemic. Yeah, I'm not saying <laughs> so, what happened in the pandemic is a positive thing. What I'm saying is like most players. What happened? Like they really had a hard time during the pandemic, being stuck yeah, in Manila, diba? Not <clears throat> knowing what's gonna happen and all that. Kaya taka because of your decision na siguro dahil taranta ka rin. Yeah, you were able to decide uh, to go I was home out of there, man. I know, dude. I I bet those tickets were really pricey though. I don't know, cause I booked it like literally like. One minute after the title made announcement, so I think I escaped the price surge. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. I think That's I escaped good. it. I think if I waited another ten minutes, twenty minutes, it would have been like it would have uh, out of stock like right away. I know. Good, good job, good job. But <laughs> so okay, pandemic happened. Um, and you you said you were you're keeping fit. You're still playing a little bit. And then, you know, just go, going through what almost every other player in the Philippines were going through in the sense of trying to keep fit in the, in the midst of a pandemic. Um, but so, no they decided na na for the for the for the bubble. What was that like playing in the bubble? Um, well, I remember we went back to Manila. Mm -hmm. A bit earlier than that, pa. I think six to eight months before mm -hmm. that, but not for training. Uh, it was for vaccine, because they wanted us vaccinated right away, like really early. So we, I went to Manila and stayed there for a month, because you know this the thirty days be between mm -hmm. vaccines. So I was actually like, I wish that. It was long enough. The pandemic was long enough where I was like excited to go back now to the bubble. I was really excited, mm -hmm. and then I didn't know that the bubble would be that hard, man. Grab, it I was know. so difficult. What made it hard? Um, for you? Just the fact that I was at home a month before, really comfortable, and then in Dumaguete, where it's basically like COVID's not there, and mm -hmm. I went to the bubble. And everything was so strict and twice a day training. And then you have to eat. Um, the food was good. Mm -hmm. But it was just like the twice a day training was so hard. And just the mental aspect that you're seeing the same four walls every day. Mm -hmm. You know, you finish practice, a really hard practice. You go to sleep. You wake up. And then you're back at the same court. Same. In less than like, yeah, in less than like nine hours. You see the exact same thing every day. And then that's for a long stretch. 
But the good thing about that is it was a good setup because I think half of our team was new. Mm. And the other half are people who were rookies um, in season 94. Mm. So it was a good like bonding experience. And we got, I think that was where we established our, our being teammates with each other. So yeah, it was, it was, it was fun, man. But it's just that there were so many crazy things that happened also, which you guys probably also <laughs> have heard. Like what? Like what? They, they, they I, don't know. Know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have I have memory loss too. I, I, I don't remember what happened. Just, you know. <laughs> okay. And that just... season itself was also like quite difficult because um, we came from the finals, and I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That was the first season that in a long time where we didn't make the finals, right? Yeah, because we 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 were what third, and then we got knocked out. Um, we had to we had to win a twice to twice to beat disadvantage. And yeah, yeah. Honestly, that one as well. Nobody, no, no, I don't think anybody in San Beda was really mad or really upset with that. We were just happy with basketball being back. Yeah. So what about you? How, how did it feel that you know you entered San Beda? You know San Beda was a winning school, a championship caliber school. But then when you entered and you played for the Red Lions, we weren't winning championships. How did it feel that also that it was Letran who was dominating at that time? Or our yeah. I was thinking about back, back ako. <laughs> I was thinking maybe it's me, right? Because <laughs> it's when I came in. Because oh, we didn't we didn't talk about this, but. Um, I came in the season this, in my second year in San Beda. I I got put into the lineup, but that was only because one of our players um, failed the subject, mm-hmm. and it was a bit like it was a bit of a weird situation because that player didn't know that he was enrolled pala in that subject. Like it was a miscommunication between um, the admins and the student. But anyway, one of our players failed the subject, and I got put in. Mm-hmm. So that was that was my first season in, and that's when we lost against Letran. And I didn't play much in the second round, especially. Mm-hmm. I didn't play at all in this. Uh, we didn't have a semis. Mm-hmm. And game one and game two, I had zero game time. Mm-hmm. And then in game three, I got put in out of nowhere. And like, let me look. I was like, I was this color basically. I was pale. I was so scared, man. Because I played like one, two minutes. If if that we have blowouts, which is almost every game at the time, all right, because uh, the team was so strong. Mm-hmm. And then I would play like one or two minutes garbage time. And then big la- game three, so close. I remember when I was in a court, all I saw, all I saw was me standing in the bottom of the ring and like five people jumping, and I didn't know what to do. And then like, and then we You're went, really we went, we went on to. To lose that game in, you know, very, really close game. We were fighting back. Pa grabe. It was, so that, um, that was your first NTA game officially. Yeah, and that was my first like real Letran game as well. Our, yeah. Like to to be in that Let, a Letran game, which I think we're gonna talk about in a <laughs> bit as well. <laughs> I hope <laughs> we will. We will. Yeah. We, we don't. We don't, we don't shy away from that. Um. Yeah. But I'm I'm just I'm just thinking in my head like, Siguro in while you're like getting ready to to check in in game three, you're like in your head, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. No, when 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 uh, the coach called my name to get in the court, that's when I was like, I was like, what the hell was happening? Man? <laughs> like this isn't real. And then people were like, like, Alex, 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 go go go. <laughs> <laughs> and then. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Walking up to the, to the the booth, I was like, "Oh, please change your mind. Please change your mind." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was, I was so nervous. Wow. Like, yeah. No, that we having the interview with some players. They're like, "Yeah, I'm really pumped up for Letran. Like, I wanna do this. I'm excited to play for Letran." But you were the opposite. You were, you didn't know I what was, to do. I was terrified, man. <laughs> Kari naman, kahit sino naman tao biruin mo, hindi ka masyadong ginamit. Tapos biglang game 3, crucial. Yeah, exactly. Game. That's that's just the fact. Like I was already nervous watching the game. 
Yeah. And then I didn't play at all, like when the game was like close. I didn't play at all throughout the entire season. Because yeah. let's face it, I wasn't supposed to be in the lineup at the time. I got in there through a technicality. Yeah. yeah. You know? So me being there was just like parang unnatural to me. But that that <laughs> but that also makes me proud for the character development. Yeah. yeah. To last season, right? It's a different story at that point. So yeah. For- I mean, so, baptism by fire first game NCAA exactly Eastern. yeah oh my god <laughs> first real game I think 45 seconds a good 45 seconds which seemed like 10 minutes in my mind <laughs> uh, I think I was the most tired guy getting subbed out I was just like exhausted <laughs> and I just ran like I think three times up and down the court you have a lot of but it's not because no 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 I couldn't breathe <laughs> Coach, so coach, now, like, can... oh, coach, okay, move <laughs> out. Uh, um, yeah, so, okay, we lost that, we lost that season, okay. But now there was pressure coming into the, the following season after that. Um, we needed to come back and win. Kasi syempre medyo, let's be honest, after that season, naging magulo. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, at after the bubble season was when Coach Yuri came in, right? Yes. 98. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what was that trans- transition like from, you know, all of a sudden in having a new coach? Um, uh, after being <clears throat> under Boyet for a while, for a long time. I was actually, I was actually in the middle of everything emotionally at the time because in the bubble, um, Last three games of elimination, or last two games of elimination, mm-hmm. I got basically at the time you couldn't change reserves, and I was mm-hmm. in the lineup. Mm-hmm. But basically, in my words, I got cut from the team mm-hmm. in the last two games of the elimination. I got I got subbed out, and I felt like I was playing well, Naman, but like um, because of um, decisions, I got I got you know subbed out from the lineup and I couldn't get back in anymore and I was still stuck in the bubble. And mm-hmm. with other guys that that happened too, they left the bubble. Um, but I stayed in the month because I still wanted to help. And then I remember my first game back, that's when I met Coach Hammer. Oh. Uh, okay. that, that game where I was now a sub, not really sub, reserve, I met Coach Hammer. And he, he I remember before the game, I was just sitting down and he went up to me and was like, oh, why aren't you playing? I was like, oh. I, I was like, what do I say? Because he's an announcer. I didn't want to say anything because Baka, it's gonna go to <laughs> go to the news. I'm like, oh, I hurt my back. I hurt my back. Oh, okay, okay. And you gave me advice, but okay, you have to do this stretch. I was like, oh, I didn't know who he was, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know who he was. I just knew that he was an announcer. Bad yeah. yeah. <clears throat> And then after the bubble, when when before Kochiri came in. Bosjud brought in the other coaches, the Bedans, Coach Alex Angeles, Coach Fra- uh, Francis. Um, I think Coach Jenkins was also there helping out. And then Coach Hammer. And all of these were volunteers. They weren't getting paid for that. They just wanted to help volunteer, uh, help the team stay in shape with practices. And bas- they were just, just teaching basic basic stuff. So, you know, that also that already shows you cool training and Beda, right? They They just stepped in to help again. Mm-hmm. And then when Coach Yuri came in, I was I was still in the middle of everything because you know I felt like I got I got cut from the team. Uh-huh. And then I felt like, oh, am I gonna do well with this guy? Yeah. Um, when Coach Yuri came in, I'm I'm really bad with names and I'm really bad with the basketball environment and culture because mm-hmm. I don't really watch PBA so much. I don't watch MPBL. I don't watch NBA. <laughs> So when coach when I when I was reading the article, now nah, I remember it was Coach Frankie, Alden, Coach Alden Ayo, and then Coach Yuri Sketa. I heard already before that there was a foreign coach coming in. Mm-hmm. So when I saw Yuri, I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> that that, that, that must be him. Got to go foreign coach. I thought it was like you know from I don't know like. From Russia or something or whatever. <laughs> I, I, yeah, Lithuania. I was like, oh man, I, I'm so ignorant. 
when it comes to uh, Philippine basketball. But yeah, when Coach Yuri came in, you could tell right away now because uh, he's really my bad, as everyone says. Gabe. And then we we saw it pretty quick now, man. Uh, he's here for a reason, in San Bernardino for a reason. So yeah. I was excited. So, so that kind of, from that experience and Pumasok as a Yuri, did you feel that you became more confident or you became more um, comfortable with playing now compared to before? Yeah. Because <clears throat> I remember one of the first things that Coach Yuri said to me explicitly was that he liked my motor. Mm. So um, I think he used Mike, uh, Mike Phillips as an example. Mm -hmm. You know how he never stops running? He's everywhere, like closing out, rebounding, sprinting, rim running. That's what he wanted from me because he saw that I had that motor. And I remember one thing that really, really struck me as well was that he said, nah, when he talked to me, um, he said, he told me like, oh, Alex, give me, give me two years. I can help you, um, make it to the pros. And at that point, I never thought about, you know, going to the pros. And then that's coming from coach Yuri, who's assistant coach for the PBA and, you know, came under coach tab. So it really struck me all of a sudden, oh, this coach like really believes in me. And around that time in that preseason, I was really 50-50 talaga whether I wanted to continue already because mm -hmm. of what happened from the last season. So honestly, I wanted to just fully focus on my academics and stop. Um, but when we started having tune-up games, I was even I was missing practice on purpose. And now they know that. But at the time, I just kept making reasons like, oh, my head hurts, blah, blah, blah. But I really wasn't in it mentally. I was really like down with basketball. And then... When we started having tune-up games, Coach Yuri used me a lot. And this is in a team with Dami Kuntapai, Popia, Bayo was still there. You know, all these all these guys that I I view that they're, you know, better players than me. Mm -hmm. And then I, I think he just liked the fact because he, he knew which program I came from with Sacred Heart. And I think he liked the fact that um, I think when I'm playing, like... I, Constantly, if you if you ask me when I'm playing, I'm like this because I'm just thinking nonstop. I'm like, oh, what do I do here? Blah blah blah. Like, oh, wh who's open? Like, uh, you know, stuff stuff like that. I'm just thinking nonstop. I think he liked that, and I think he saw that. So when tune up games came, I played a lot, and I was so surprised. And then that's when I realized, now okay, I should take this season seriously, especially mm -hmm. with it being so short, the preseason leading up to it. Mm -hmm. I already knew that, you know, this guy's not, this head coach of ours is not going to get a fair chance. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, want what happened to um, the previous uh, with Coach Boyet. I didn't want it to happen to him. Now, nah, you know, it's his first year. He's given such a difficult situation. I don't want, I didn't want him to be judged for it. So I wanted to, you know, do my best to help. Yeah, agree. Honestly, like based from all the conversations we've had, the impression to me of Coach Yuri has always been like he's not gonna I see bang coach na he's gonna make you feel good. Oh no, you're it's okay, you know, you're doing well, but he's not gonna play you. Or he's gonna like says one thing and then does another. But with how people talk about Coach Yuri, it's like he's pretty straight up, like, look, you gotta you gotta do this or I'm not I'm not gonna be able to play you. Or or just keep doing this and yeah, you're doing well and all that, but you, you gotta do this. So I think that's super underrated, especially in the context of Philippine basketball. Like I say I think player like some coaches they think they're protecting players, but honestly they're just they're actually hurting players more when you're not honest with them. Yeah. You're you're hurting a player like instead of him actually doing what he needs to be done, he's gonna question and it's like I thought I was doing well, but why aren't you playing me? Right? Or or like I'm trying to do this, but it, like I don't know why. 
diba? Parang, I don't understand it. So, I think that's the thing about Kaochi. That's, well, that's what I appreciate about him. So, okay. We're, we've we've asked a lot of people about the, the first season of Coach Yuri. It's, it was really difficult. And we all know that what happened with him was uh, Kinapos, uh, for lack of a better term, in the final four. What was your mindset coming into this season, season 100? Like, you personally. Season because 99. you are now one of the older guys. 99, 99. Season 99. Season 100. <laughs> season 99. <laughs> <laughs> Aba, sino hindi? Ayun na, naglalaro yung team B laban sa AAC. <laughs> Pucha eh. Pero, de, yun, <clears throat> season 99, what was your mindset? Um, Yeah, just to follow up what I said already. Um, With season 99, I remember two days after we lost season 98, Eight. Mm-hmm. Me and some of the guys. Peter already um said this. I think to you guys. I I watched that. We had a talk. I was part of that talk. Uh, it was me, Peter, Jacob, and some others. And Coach Yuri came to San Beda just to talk to us. Not there was no practice, whatever. We asked him, Coach, can we can we have a talk? And in that talk, um, what I talked to him about was I said, I said, Coach. I don't believe you were given a fair chance. Um, I don't believe that I was 100% committed in that season, especially in the preseason, like I said, with missing practices and being, you know, not fully committed in 50-50. And I told him, uh, in the following year, I will commit 100% of myself and I'll do my best for us to do better in the next season. Because at the time already, I was talking, even even I was talking with Peter, because we talk all the time. I was saying, bro, with his system and our team and the way everyone listens and nobody really has an ego, we can win the championship. Mm-hmm. I really believed it back then. Even even back then. Me and Peter both believed it, Talaga. So yeah. I just I just told him like, oh, I'm gonna commit hundred percent of myself for season ninety-nine. And then leading up to it, it was so hard. <laughs> he killed us in practices, man. Like he, he said it early on, like your number one opponent in the practices leading up to the season. It's not, you know how some coaches are like, oh, who's your biggest enemy? Yourself, right? He's like, no, it's the coaches. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to push you till you, we're going to push you until you, you, you don't, you want to stop, but you shouldn't stop. Mm-hmm. He always says never, never quit. Every practice is that guys just don't quit, don't quit. Nobody will quit. Like lang. So yeah. Gulat ka, gulat ka bigla naglace up si Coach Yuri and ball up, ball up, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can still play though. I've seen the X three. He can still play, pero yeah. Um, yeah, we discussed it actually. Yung yung, yung process na yun. Um. And a lot of we, we a lot of the players really cover that that period na talaga pinahirapan kayo in the, in that build up, and the whole team really. I don't know kung tama ang term ba yung buy in nag buy in kayo sa system niya. Yes. And I think the whole mindset was like you really wanted to win this 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 season, not just for for him, but you know to for the whole team. Because yung yeah, Let's be honest, hindi, people were not like expecting San Beda to win yeah. the championship this time. So, ano yun, parang ang laking bagay na eh, yung, yung preparation din eh. So, okay. Yung nga, yung preparation na, bago, bago tayo pumunta sa season 99, kamusta naman yung experience mo sa US? Ikaw mismo. When you tra- when you trained in the US, what did you get at E1 Universal? <laughs> Actually, E1 Karen. No, you're saying E1 Karen. Okay. No. What Peter left out in his story was that, ah uh, no, he did say, naman, that he went with them 
after the universal you know there, there's a side area where you can go shopping it's like mm. you know really really nice looking mm. but me i felt like because throughout the entire thing um what the coaches were preaching was leadership and so me personally i did not go with them because the rule was after we leave the gates of universal we go straight to the van mm -hmm. and then when i left the gates of universal i saw everybody <laughs> going to the shops <laughs> walking i saw all of them i was like oh my god what are they doing so i was i, I just waited uh, with um the coaches and boss dude mm -hmm. and then <laughs> i was just stressed out out of my mind like trying to call them and finally we got everyone and oh my god you already know this oh my god the pricing pala we went all the way back and <laughs> the legendary J. E. lopez was still <laughs> waltzing around pala around there <laughs> and the sad thing is uh the Quintus to Peter and uh, yeah, he took a lift to where mm -hmm. we were having dinner. When I went out and I got him from the lift, and the driver was saying something to him, to him pa, and the first thing J.E. said when he got out of the door, oh, yeah, sorry, oh, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> walking to the car, I was about to, I was about to like, you know, I was about to like get so mad and rip her mad and like what's wrong with you blah blah, blah. and as soon as I heard I heard him like he was genuinely scared. Oh, like, sorry, Kuya, sorry, sorry. I said, oh, go go eat eat oh. have dinner have dinner. I felt so bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad because he was so he was already scared there. Now hmm. how's he gonna get home? Buti na lang na. Yeah, it was like let's just say it's one for the books. One of, one of the typical legendary uh, U.S. stories. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> I think almost every team that's ever trained in the U.S. are maybe be some bad or the other teams. Lagi may eh. Like I've heard stories of a player na lasing pala. <laughs> nasa team nasa bus na lasing pala na nandun pa sa nasa hotel niya na lasing pala. Um, uh, uh, daming ganong kwento eh. It's always funny when you when it's uh, there's always something happening when you go to the U.S. for training. I don't know why, what, what, what's up with it, but there's always something. Um, pero baka na may iba dyan. may iba pang kwento dyan na ano, na hindi lang maba makwento kwento ni Peter nun. Wala naman. Yun na yung pinaka, ano. I think like among most batches, I, th I, I think we were one of the more behaved ones. Ah, behaved. <laughs> A bit. A bit, a, a bit, bit magulo, a <laughs> bit, you know, unorganized at times, but at least behaved, yeah. I think. <laughs> Look, watch J.E. Lopez being the most disciplined ever senior. <laughs> <laughs> what? He'll practice what he preaches. <laughs> don't be like me, guys. Yeah, like, don't be like me. Those shops are a trap. <laughs> I can't wait to ma, ma, mapunta sa J.E. Sa, ano, sa Upper Box Podcast. Tapos yun yung una natin tanong sa kanya. Kamusta yung oh, US? Anong uh -huh. size sombrero na binili mo? <laughs> I'm excited for the next U.S. trip. If they go back to L.A., I'm gonna tell them to go to Universal. And bring J.E. <laughs> and make him make make him the organizer of everything. Because he knows it like the back of his hand by now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, J.E. Yeah. Remember, download Uber and Lyft. <laughs> uh, pero, yeah. So, so okay. You guys had a great time. Was able to play and uh, with Clay Thompson. And um, really just bonded. I think what one thing that we didn't also kind of highlight in these U.S. trip stories is like, these U.S. trip stories are not just about skills development or training, but it's also about bonding. Yeah, 100%. 100% bonding. Because when you go to the U.S., because even here, how do you know, you guys are known, you're the better Red Lions, how do you know you're the or somewhat, some, somewhat you know, but when you go to the U.S., you're just regular oh. people again. You're just, yeah, you're just students, you're just friends. You're just teammates. 
Yeah. Diba? And and I think well, a lot of athletes who listen to this podcast would probably relate. Iba yung bonding pag kayo kayo lang. Like on the team bus, you know, going and going to practice or going to games or going home from games. I think yun din eh, yun yun yung aspeto nung the aspect of the US trips that I from the stories I've heard from not just your team but from other teams or other batches of Red Lions parang yun talaga eh, yun yung bagay eh. um, from Robert Bollock's antics <laughs> to yeah. to you know, to J.E. Lopez um, legendary almost getting left in the US uh, <laughs> story but yeah um, so okay now we're going to season 99 um, wait before and- that that summer when Norman Black was announced to be a consultant for San Beda, you as a big man, <clears throat> how did you feel that, you know, this legendary coach is coming in for our team? Well, like we established already, I don't know anyone. Is it really? Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. I was going to say. I had no clue. I, I, I heard of his name a lot already because I knew that he was Coach Yuri's head coach, right? Yeah. In, in college. And so one of the first things I did was I searched him up. Mm-hmm. I Googled him. I YouTubed him. And then easy to say that in his first practice there, I was just staring at him like, oh, this is that guy I was watching on YouTube. <laughs> the, the Mr. 100. Yeah. The, you know, I was watching interviews of him as well. And he was so, like, so laid back. And then Frankly, I was I was a bit um worried, not really worried, but like I was like a bit intimidated. Now, oh, this guy looks like so. Maybe it's like, parang army trainer, and uh, he demands respect. And sir, yes, yeah. sir, <laughs> he's not like that, man. He just comes in. Um, he does de- demand respect. He demands that when you doing drill or when he talks to you, you look at him. But he's not like. He's not insecure at all. He's so secure in himself. And in between some drills, you know how like us big men in between drills, we like to fool around, uh, you know, do a hook shot and one guy's trying to block him and they're, you know, playing around fighting for the rebound. He's there as well. He's joining us. He's like, ah, you can't make that. So slap the ball from your head. Like, oh, you, you don't got that. Stuff like that, man. I was like so, I was so generally like um, impressed by him. And Throughout the season, I would keep coming back to him for advice. So it was a massive help him being there uh, with us, the big man. I mean, he's probably the best big man coach in the country. Like skills wise, he's and one of probably one of the best coaches um, in Philippine basketball. And shout out to him. He's uh, I I just saw the post of SBP. He's now the new director for grassroots development, and he's in yeah. Cebu. He's, he was in Mandawe. Yeah. So, yeah. Shout out to Coach Norman. Would love to have you here in the podcast and just ask him how it was winning all those championships. And right. so, who was your favorite big man in San Beda? <laughs> <laughs> Clifford Hope, yeah, 100%. <laughs> that's his guy. Oh. That's, his, that's his project. Project. Okay. Project Cliff. Um, but yeah. I thought uh, this is this is just me, Alex though. No. Honestly, the difference between your season ninety eight and season ninety-nine ang lake nan tina as nan larumo, honestly. Like your season ninety-eight, I felt you're still not sure of yourself. You're still not you and you were talking about that too. Like the band indica sure sa with basketball, you didn't, you weren't sure about mentally, and it showed in your games. But with season ninety nine, I really felt that you did apply yourself, and you really did give yourself to to this team. And so, okay, we're not gonna go through the whole season. Siguro, kasi medyo na ano narin yun eh, ng ibang podcast, but ng ibang episodes namin. But siguro since ano narin, you what was your like? Welcome to the NCA. Nalimutan natin kanina, welcome to the NCA moment mo. Yung letran game na yun. Pero yung physicality wise. 
Yeah. <laughs> what was like? What was your welcome to the NCAA moment? <clears throat> I can't really think of anything much, but most likely, it it m must have been last season actually. My real welcome to the NCAA moment, because mm -hmm. I play pretty conservatively. Mm -hmm. uh, right. I don't do anything crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm a role player. Let's just say that I'm just I'm just a role player, and my role is defense, right? Mm -hmm. And there was the San Sebastian game in the second mm -hmm. round where mm -hmm. we lost was my real welcome to the NCA moment because I'm supposed to be one of the more reliable guys on defense, but Kalaha scored so much on me, and. I felt personally responsible for losing that game. I really feel like it was my fault, mm -hmm. and that just it it really it up to now like I was I'm still frustrated about it because <clears throat> here I don't care if I score, I don't care if I get hit, I don't care if I can't get rebounds, I do care if I get scored on mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. If I get scored on once by a good move, I'll be okay. Respect, it's a good move. But if I get scored on back to back to back, where coaches force to sub me out because I can't play defense when I'm supposed that's supposed to be my only job, that's when I get pissed off with myself, right? And I got eaten up that game. Like Kalat was just going crazy, and they won the game because of because of that. And that's the game before the famous LU. Oh, LU, right. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you can't play in the dialect, and you can't play in the background, mono, and talk. Which is where I am now, as we can see. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Sure, sure, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I booked it, na eh. <laughs> Pero, sabi nga ribang players, eh, if it wasn't for that, for that LU and everything else, you guys would probably not be champions right now. So, Credit to you rin pala. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take responsibility for that. Yeah, it's on me. <laughs> but, but, but please, for the love uh, of whoever, but, whoever handles, uh, go ahead. You know go what? Ahead. If if we just, because we were doing so good at the first round, diba? Mm -hmm. if we just won those two games, this whole LU thing would not have happened because it would have been like, okay, um, we have a break, go enjoy, blah, 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 blah right? But just mm -hmm. the fact that we played so bad and we had such a bad start. And then we all of a sudden we had games because the, I think two weeks before that or a week before that, we were already asking like, oh, what's the schedule? You yeah. know, just so we know. Then we, <laughs> as soon as we heard the schedule, yeah, low key, like, uh, <laughs> Alex, yung pag may narinig na information, magbubuk ka agad eh. Alam mo yung... May history na pala ako, no? Oo. Pwede ko lang na wala nang past. What do you call it? Advance nag-isip. Dami mong app eh. Dami mo sigurong flight app, travel app. Oh, actually, yeah. Pero, no. Yun yung mga promo eh. Soon. Pero, eto. Whoever handles the... The schedule for any out of town games for San Beda, please do not have any La Union games, LU yep. games, please. <laughs> yep. Do not. Let's let's skip that. Yeah, no. can't do it. Dude, let's not do that. I say, kung nahirapan si kayo sa Davao, LU will be worse. <laughs> oh man, that that Davao thing as well. Bye. I don't want to miss it. Ah, so weird. No, you you guys already know it. Come on. <laughs> Ano to eh? Kinawin ni Jacob din. Yeah. Party ka rin ba? Or ikaw yung... Party-teaser. <laughs> you'll, nev you'll never see me partying, man. You'll never see me in VGC or... Sinulog lang. Or Sinulog Tomas lang. Morad. Sinulog, yeah. Just walking around. But <laughs> I hate going out late at night. I hate it. I hate... Especially like um going out drinking. Mm -hmm. I hate it. Because the next day you're messed up and you miss a whole day and... Uh, I'd rather just be in the at home. Uh, well, before I'd be in the internet cafe the whole night, but now I'll just be at home because I have my own setup. Now, <laughs> so I'll just be at home playing, <laughs> playing till early in the morning while everyone else is out, you know, having the why time of I, their lives. Why would I need alcohol when I have Hell Divers too? 
Oh, Ooh. I'm actually gonna get into that soon, <laughs> dude. Ooh. Uh, it's a fucking that. good game. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, but yung ay parang tatawa ako kasi talaga yung yung mga ganyan kwento sobrang natutuwa ako kasi looking at the time it was the, some of the most serious shit ever because we weren't supposed to be doing that but now looking back I was like and now it's nice to laugh about it I know yeah, yeah. I think it's also less the lessons learned for the coaches <laughs> like can you imagine go like how how were you how were you guys oh oh hey, go ahead go ahead sorry nagde-delay sa ano ko eh, internet ko eh. yeah. sorry go <laughs> I think it's also just a lesson learned for the, the the next seasons for the coaches. Like never just give it like one day advance yung yung schedule. Don't tell them. Yeah. Don't tell these guys. Ako <laughs> magagalit yung teammates mo. Bakit mo bibigo ko? I'm I'm not there anymore. It's okay. Oh. Oh, uy, uy. Yeah, may ayan, yeah, may ayan. Okay, okay. Pero ito pala sa season 99. So, parang it was your first full season na you know we're back so physical and everything face to face uh how did it feel like you know from sa Cebu na while yung crowd yung crowd sa man sa NCA especially pag Latran game was it memorable for you uh which 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 Latran game like the oh, Latran game yeah the Latran game <laughs> the Latran game oh after every Latran game when i get back to the dugout i'm deaf my ears are ringing it's it's insane and the drums and everything like if you you know what i'd rather be on the court than watching honestly now that, now that i've experienced actually like being you know one of the main players of a latran game mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'd much rather be in the court because in the court you're so focused you can't think of like the nerves or whatever but mm-hmm. if you're just watching you're just like you're shaking the entire time like nervous when we get when we get to the talk about the finals i'll, I'll remind me i'll, I'll make um I'll tell you guys a story as well. <laughs> all right, all right. But yeah, that Latran game was insane. Yeah. Tell us about it. Uh, this is the one where the really the first round, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With Peter. Yeah, with Peter getting hit. Oh, I was pissed off about that as well. Because let's just... The big men that started that game do not start most games. Mm-hmm. So why did they start all of a sudden? Right? Yeah. What was their assignment? But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there because, you know, Peter's my best friend in the team. And he already has cuts. Like, he already has cuts already. Yeah, and now they just, he needs one more and he has an Adidas stripe on his eyebrow. <laughs> right? He can basically get sponsored now. And now he has this one up here. Oh, Kawawa. And just the fact that leading up to the season, Peter got beat up so much in practices and in games. He dislocated his finger again, like it was popped out in practice. And then he hurt his ankle, he hurt his groin. And then the next day after getting injured, shout out to Peter. He's, the, the guy's got crazy heart. Every time he gets injured, especially the dislocation, mm-hmm. uh, they told him to rest. But the next, that same practice, when they put it back, he taped it and kept practicing. He refuses to take a day off because he refuses to make it an excuse now. Oh, I'm hurt. Okay, I can relax. When he got uh, this stitched, mm-hmm. the next day, he was practicing with the, the stitches still there. The, you know, those white um, stitches that keep it together? Yeah. He practiced. Wow. Like the next practice after after it, it got cut. Wow. Mm-hmm. The guy's insane. I keep telling him, Peter, what's wrong with you, man? Rest. He's like, no, 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 I can't, I can't. Wow. Right? Yeah. No, big, and actually, big respect to that guy, man. Sobra, dude. Like, even his episode, like, I, I just saw his heart and how proud of it, proud of being a better than he was. Exactly, yeah. Sobrang appreciate ko dun. And, um, that's why, like, he's si Peter, he's just a naging, like, no una, hindi ko na appreciate si Peter, pero nung, um, when I got to, to, to watch him play, and especially this season, grabe yung respeto ko kay Peter. And getting to know his story. Bro, he tried to petition the NCA for him to play one more year. <laughs> I know that. He did. I know. <laughs> he did. Because his birthday is just this uh, just uh, too early 
if it was a few days later, he could have played. So he tried mm. to petition it, but it's like, oh, by the time it's championship, it won't reach my birthday in the But you know, in the end, it's it's the, they change it now, and it's the year, pala. But just the fact that he's already a seasoned pro and he still wants to play one more year, just to extend, just to stay with Zanveda. Grab it. Mm. Yeah, honestly, and I had conversation with him about that after. Like he was genuinely sad. Like I could tell, he was genuinely sad that he couldn't play. I say, um. Iba, iba, iba yung tao, iba yung mama. Iba talaga, yeah. Grabe yung mama. Big respect to him. Sobrang thankful ako sa kanya um, as, as our captain. But anyway, so yeah, going back to that Letran game. Uh, you guys, we almost lost that game, honestly. And it was a tight game up to the end. And I think that was a game when para mas na intindihan niya na oh this team is can actually do something. Kumbaga this team can really compete. Kasi that was I think that was your first test of adversary uh, of uh, of against adversity in that season. Of course nga natalo tayo sa Lyceum and all that and natalo din tayo sa Mapua but I think that Letran game showed not just to the people outside his team, but I had a sense that it showed that even to you guys now, okay, we can fight, we can do this. Like it proved na what you guys have been believing for so long. Kaya. Yeah. Like, so, plus the fact okay. na it was it was a game where it was so hardly hard fought. <clears throat> and we knew beforehand, you know. Lachan didn't have such a great record uh, coming into that game. Mm. But we knew that even if we're undefeated and they haven't gotten a single win, for example, it won't matter. All of that does not matter when it comes to Lachan and Beda. It goes back to zero and it's always going to be a, a dog fight. Mm. So we knew that coming in. Like we were setting that throughout the entire season, me and Peter, um, especially in the first round, we're setting a mindset every pregame every practice before leading to a game. Because I feel like what our problem was in Season 98, it's about win-loss, win-loss. We, we, were, we weren't able to get more than back-to-back -back wins mm -hmm. throughout the entire season. Back-to-back -back wins and then loss again and then win-loss. So we felt like it was mental. So leading up to that, we were you know trying to keep everyone's mindset like, guys, we can't underestimate this team, blah, 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 blah. blah. And then... The fact the the way how we played, especially in the end game, I think that's when we started having our end game composure, oh. which from then kept going until the end of the season. And that was also the point when I played a good game, and that will be always my favorite game till the end, even though I blew a wide open layup because my knee buckled mm -hmm. uh, for the lead. Do you remember that in the fourth quarter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in yeah. Bounty Jacob, and I I backdoored. And then I got the ball. And I was like, oh, okay, freely up. Boom, there goes my knee. <laughs> sank, sank to the floor, blew a wide open layup. The fact that um, coach dropped that play in the end, down by one. And Jacob got it and instantly recognized something that we've been trying to teach since season 98. The recognition now. Uh, so uh, there's two people on me. Someone is open somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he just instantly passed that to me. That hook shot of mine mm -hmm. was the longest one second of my life. Because in tune-ups, I miss that shot so often. It's it's weird. Kochi was telling me like the uh, last week long, like he was like, Alex, how come you always miss open layups? But when when you get fouled, you make them. <laughs> <laughs> like it's easier for me to make make end ones then open layups because I get so like I don't know what it is like don't don't you're mess this open. up now you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're too open oh so that was the okay. longest one second of my life grabbing it wow commercial lang commercial lang uh, San Beda won against the hey, let's go let's go 77 to 60 that's a special group man I know bro I'm, I'm telling you these dudes iba iba grab yung season 100 but yeah um, okay, so now that we're 
yun nga, yung, yung, yung adversity mo. Actually, yung, yung uh, commercial lang, going back to the <coughs> sinabi mo about with Jacob, that was a classic play. That was Ateneo as fuck, yung play na yun. That was yeah. Norman Black. Black. That was Norman Black. I watched I watched that exact play. I searched it up on YouTube the, that, that night as well. I was like, oh my God, it really is. <laughs> that was the same. Yeah. Exactly. Bro, <clears throat> um, yes, yeah, sabi ko, yes, very Ateneo, Ateneo yung coach, na nakakapag-isip, Ateneo yung head coach, yung nag-play, Atenista din, Ateneo de Cebu. Oo. Oo, man, right, no? Full circle. Full circle, <laughs> di ba? Uh, yeah. We stand on the hill. <laughs> Pero, yun, um, okay. So, you guys, like, all, all All of the other players have talked about this um, during the second round, man. Going to the second round of the adversity that you guys had to go through, you know, losing those two early games and then um, really on the brink of like losing the season. You, you guys could have easily like we. I talked to Coach Yuri about it. Na, inga, they could have easily chosen na okay next year na lang. yeah. Wala na. And then they could have easily chosen to fold. But you guys chose na oh, okay, we're we're no, we're gonna compete. And dude, pero doon ko nakita talaga yung value nung UK and Andrada din. Gotta say. Just gotta say. Grabe yung UK and Andrada. But bro, talk to us, talk through us how it was for you during that whole very turbulent second round. Yeah, like I remember Coach Ralph. Um, somewhere around that second mm-hmm. round, came up to me because he likes to talk to players, and I was just sitting down watching people warm up for practice. I was just sitting down looking at them. And he came up to me and he was like, "Oh, how are you feeling?" And I was like, "I, I remember I said like, and I'm tired, <laughs> like." Not physically, not really physically, but it's so like emotionally draining, uh-huh. losing those two games, and then winning finally, and then losing against Mapua. Like it's so difficult at that point to find motivation, mm-hmm. and easily you could have just yeah, like you said, you could have easily just said like ah, ayang we blew a good first round for us again. Next season, we'll learn from it, you know? Yeah. But coming into that, when we basically had to win every single game for the next four games, I remember, once again, me and Peter were talking. And Peter, every single day, every single day, and after every single game throughout, mm-hmm. we would calculate our chances to make the final four. Like, okay. If we win these two, Baka, we can lose against this team like that. Or if we lose Benil, then we have to win the next three. If we win the next three, we can lose the last game against LPU. Mm-hmm. Like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the second to the last game against LPU. And it was just so like draining. But um, from every practice uh, there on out, Coach Uri would start um, the huddle with, guys, we're at a crossroads. We can go this way or we can go that way. It's your choice. Us coaches will just help you, but it's the player's decision on which way you want to go. And I know that he mentioned this through every interview he's had, and here as well, he mentioned it as well. And that's what really stuck to the team. Nah, we've been buying in this entire time. Why would we just stop all of a sudden? It's not at the end of the world, right? <laughs> So, yeah. so yun. and obviously it bear fruit and, and you guys bought in kumbaga hindi <clears throat> kumbaga hindi niya sinukuha niya sistema and, 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 and it came to fruit it came, it came to show that this team can compete and this team is still sanbeta at the end of the day um, yep. so okay this is your first final four again since losing to Benilde And you're gonna go up against Lyceum, um, a team that you <clears throat> split 
during the regular season. How was that experience for you? Yung final four niya, before we go into the finals. Uh, I remember that Lyceum was always difficult for us to crack since 98. I think 98, we didn't beat them. We got swept in the eliminations. Yep. First round, we lost. And in the second round, we won. Mm-hmm. Right? But that was with bad game by some of their key players. Mm-hmm. Right? So I didn't really see that as a convincing win. Mm-hmm. But I did like, uh, ironically, I did like that we were at a twice to win disadvantage. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is that? Because from the second round, we were basically at a four times to win disadvantage in the last few games, right? Mm-hmm. We had we were gonna get eliminated. We won this get we won the next game. Okay. If we lose one more, we're eliminated. Won the next game. Okay, if we lose this game, we're gonna get eliminated. Won that game again. On and so forth and so forth. That was our theme. So mm-hmm. when I saw then so when we had a twice to win disadvantage, I was like, oh. It's nothing new, mm. right? We've been doing this, yeah. Like this is this is our home court, basically. Mm-hmm. It's our natural environment, so I felt comfortable actually, and I was like, okay. There was a little bit, little thing in the back of my head, na parang, okay, game tomorrow, we might be going home, mm-hmm. but I wasn't worried, man. My confidence, ne? You know that that's what confidence does to you. It's yeah. You know, mental mindset, talaga, it's really different. Like, it's just it's the really fact different. that that was when we were peaking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in those games, every game just kept getting better and better and better. Yeah. So, yeah, confidence, like you said. Okay. So, ito na, finals. How did it feel like coming into the final, your first finals in the NCAA? Like, you know, people were lining up, people were. Uh, talking on social media, it's like it's going to be a great matchup, great series against Mapua. How did how 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 was your preparation on? How was your mindset when preparing for that finals? Um, the support we got in my, I've been in Salada for six years, oh. and the support we got that championship game, that championship, <clears throat> that season, that postseason. Hmm. was the it was the craziest support that we've gotten like alum, <clears throat> alumni were coming to our practices uh-huh. alumni from the 32 years ago when Mapua beats and Beda were coming and sharing their story saying that they couldn't <clears throat> up to now it still haunts them uh-huh. that loss that they had and people were coming and sharing their stories and the lines and I remember there was a class that I went to And then one of like, I was just, I was already sitting in the class for like a good two minutes. And then a teacher who saw me pass by the corridor, went out of her class and into my class, stopped my class and said, sorry, I just saw that one of our players is here in this class. I wanted to wish you guys good luck. Like, uh, we really like, we're really all behind you, blah, 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 blah. Like it was insane. And then all of my classmates who, who, um, I'm an I'm a reg- an irregular student at this point. All my classmates were like staring at me like, oh, you know. And I was and me me being like the guy in the corner of the class. I'm like, oh my god, thank you, Paul. Thank you, mom. I appreciate it. Everyone's staring at me. I'm like, oh my god. But yeah, it was insane. <laughs> yeah, the, everyone was so nice and so like you know they were motivating us. And you know we can't lose when when everyone's giving you that much support. There's no there's no chance that we're gonna lose. No way. Shit. Alam mo yung pwede na sa isip ko, Pao? Pwede siya ano? High school musical na or movie na gano'n. Na parang <laughs> nag-play out sa before the finals or the big yeah, yeah. game. Oo, oo, oo. Tapos makikita mo si Alex sumakanta na Oh, you need No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, Never in my wildest dreams. <laughs> It's like I want to be. I don't want to be a Division Two player anymore. I want to be a singer. <laughs> oh, there's the backstory, pala. Are you a Division Two player? That's you why. Play. I have I have news, guys. 
Oh, teka lang, okay. teka lang. Final suna, final suna, final suna. Final suna, excited ka eh. <laughs> Singer <laughs> pala si Alex. Sige <laughs> <laughs> Sige, uh, 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 finals. You lost game one. Sabi mo kanina. It's nothing new to you. Yung disadvantage ang San Beda, disadvantage of team. I was happy when we lost game one. I was happy. No, I'm gonna be legit. When we lost right. game one, I was like, uh, that's when I was like, all my worries went away. Okay. Because here we are again. Mm. Our favorite place on earth for, for that batch. You know? <laughs> maybe maybe we should have lost on purpose, no? We shouldn't have <laughs> even tried that game. We should have just been like, okay, let's lose this for a sure ball now. <laughs> right? <laughs> Ganahan ka talaga eh, no? Medyo mayabang, no? No, no, no. Yabang din. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, uh, okay, let's not say I was happy. But I wasn't uh-huh. worried. I was really not worried when we, when we lost game one. I was like, okay, here we go. Tuloy-tuloy na. Like, I wasn't worried at all. I wasn't thinking in my head, no, oh, we lost game one. We're at a disadvantage. I didn't feel like we were at a disadvantage at all mm-hmm. at that point. So... Okay, so game one. Honestly, you know, the difference between I think game one and game two is like the physicality of game one. Like Mapua just went super aggressive, <clears throat> you guys. Yeah. And then game two, they try to be aggressive, basically making Jacob flip. Grab you, grab you, and grab you, hold him. Yeah. But I felt I was worried actually. In a, in a way, because the calls were so bad in game two. Just gotta be honest. So bad. And the flopping was so bad. Like, kami na lang yun. you don't have to say it. Kami na ni Danny magsasabi nun, it was just bad. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> so, okay, game three. Eto, ewan ko kung na, 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 narinig mo na to sa podcast namin. Pero, Swerte ang San Beda sa Araneta. Bro, we haven't lost there since 09. Home court talaga. Yun ang tunay na home court. Lahat ng talo natin, it's all been in Moa Arena. But we have never lost in Ar- Araneta since 09. And honestly, the, the dynasty of San Beda, the, the early 10s and then where we are now, it's built on Araneta. So walk us through how you guys prepare for game three and you know then before we go into the nitty gritty, how was game three? Um well our preparation for game three was basically just a continuation from our preparation for game two. Mm-hmm. Our adjustment from game two. Uh you remember in game two when Jacob flipped? Mm-hmm. That was a very similar foul to when he flipped in game one. Mm-hmm. Right, they hit yeah. him really, really hard, and he was on the floor laying down. Mm-hmm. The difference was in game two, he started doing push-ups. Yeah, after he got hit, Coach Siri yeah. told him to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said, "Guys, if you get hit, don't stay down because that's what they want to see. They want to see that you know, you got hit, you're down. Your teammates are just walking around around you. Like, get up right away, or if not." Do push-ups. Do 10 push-ups if you're going to stay down. Yeah. So after that, when Jacob started doing push-ups, then the, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right? So yeah. that came from Coach Yuri. That was his direct orders. <laughs> <laughs> to just hard. show that we're not affected by it. You know? If we get hit and we get down, we're going to do push-ups. If they get hit, they're going to flop. Mm. Right? Bro, so who's, do... who's winning at this point <laughs> mentally? Yeah. That's true. But honestly, if he didn't go, if he didn't do the push-ups, magkagulo dun. Because the alumni were so pissed. Yeah. Because that was a super, super dangerous foul. Yeah. Dude. Bakit mo yun? Masut din yung free throw niya. Oh, put Brad. Alam mo ba? Lata ng klase ng mura. Bisaya, Ilonggo, di ba kapampangan ni Locano na mga bidista na. Mumumura sila doon. Eh, what? Diba? Grabe yun, bro. Kasi, grabe talaga yung pagkakaflip. But anyway, tama ka. I agree with you. Especially after game two. 
their body language was so done. Yeah. Like yung the video body language. Nga, yung video ng pre-game na before game three, kita mo na yung body language. San Beda was wild. You guys were wilding out. Uh, oh, cool. we, cal, cal, uh, we have a chant that we break out in important games. Mm-hmm. And I heard that chant um, in my first year. So in this year, it was me who was leading that chant. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just a, the typical pregame chant. And that's what really hypes us up. And every game that I've done that chant, we won. I did not do it in game one. Mm-hmm. I did not lead a chant in game one. Game two and three, I did it and we won. That chant is undefeated <laughs> in season 99. <laughs> that chant has been going on since as far as I remember, since I became a fan. It could have right? been going on even before I was a student, even. And yeah, I've been... I don't yeah. know when it started. It's it's the one that, that starts like well, everywhere we go. That, oh, that one, right? Yeah. yeah. That's an insane chant. And I, I made sure to keep doing that. And now we are. Yeah, bro. And I now I'm chant. telling Yuki and Josh, like, oh, it's now now it's you, you guys. So it's just it's gonna keep going on, man. In fifty years we'll still be hearing that chant. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's a, it's a good chant. I love it. It's a good chant. And I mean you chant na yon, bro. Like that sh- like going back to the video. Um I felt that Mapu was super nervous and you guys were hyped. Like the energy was just so different. Like coming into that game. And so, okay. Going into that, okay, we're we're not gonna go into the whole game, but what was it like when you first came out onto the court and saw all the people? Like in Araneta. Um, the first thing I looked at uh, while warming up was the crowd mm-hmm. because in game one, we, we already know game one, there's not going to be so many people, right? It's not going to be full. Game two, I think it was 50 50, mm-hmm. Beda, Mapua. Game three, it was overwhelming, overwhelmingly Bedan. <laughs> and I was yeah. worried because I, you know. If you're going through Facebook, all you see is like, oh, there are Mapu ones getting tickets from the Sanbeda side. <laughs> you know, there was so much drama. <laughs> and oh, Bro. my mga scalper, you know, that, yeah. are take, that are getting our tickets. I was like, oh my God, next thing you know. But grab it, I think it was like 65% Sanbeda, maybe 70% Sanbeda. Yeah. yeah. And it was insane to watch. Um, my My family flew in to watch, and my brother, the entire time he was just he was just recording like the sea of red the entire game that's all he was doing he wasn't even watching the game he was just looking at the <laughs> the drums when i went out and i saw the drums bro i was so impressed i think we had like 12 to 15 drums 20 20, 20? yeah <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> that's insane actually i was counting know. it from the they were hiding the it. there were only five drums uh, the first quarter i was there with them then the second quarter came in, they were like, Oh, you secret weapon, you secret weapon. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a fucking movie. Like drums coming in one, two, three, four. They just kept coming. Yeah, dude. Yeah, then yeah. uh the the band was like, Alabang, Alabang, Rizal, I need you here, I need you here, back up, back up. It was it was like war there up there. Which was which was so good to see because I know that the band was a bit under fire a bit in the season, right? Because um, I remember people were complaining like, oh, out of tune or they're not there sometimes or Mahina or whatever. And then when it mattered most, grab it. And it shows how important they are to the San Beda community. Like, like it, it should definitely be looked after, right? In my opinion. And dude, our chants, our songs, like... Insane. We have the best chants. Yeah. Here we go, here we go. How do you feel whenever you hear... The Indian nice. now come on. I think every fourth quarter, mm-hmm. whether I'm on the court or on the bench, you, you'll see me like when it starts when they start doing the ten, 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 and you'll see me like nodding my head like, eh. <laughs> like I'm like okay, it's go time. <laughs> it's so fun, man. Yeah, it like it's so good. Yung friends ko nga from Ateneo Denaga naman Ateneo Denaga they would. Because I would always post on Facebook about San Beda and the Indian Yell. And these these friends of mine are football players. 
or and uh, rugby players and they would always tell me bro the engine yell is like the haka of the philippines or the haka of sagbeda and it's insane and everybody's really impressed with it and dude i would love to see that alive in another 50 years you know like like the, just like the chance that you guys uh you know, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i mean and, i don't even know what they're about... saying Either. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, it doesn't really mean <laughs> it's gibberish, right? Yeah, it's yeah. gibberish, but, <laughs> but it's so but, good. But, but but um, it was like we had the um the son of the guy who created the the choreography. Yeah, I said before there was a choreography, there was the the music, and we we talked to him about it, like, and, and he he really just talked about how the Indian year came to be. Was because of the community, like it was a community. It was a community effort, and I think you know, you saw quite a about the band, dude. Like Beda Alabang, Beda Minjola, and Beda Tai Tai were there, and then alumni were also playing, and it was just so fun. Like, um, that's how it used to be, Alex, back back when we were students. Like that's that was a standard. Like, um, unuan, hirap ng tiket. And then you're drunk after the game. <laughs> In Venjola, right? Yeah, In Venjola, yeah. I, 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 I know you don't drink, but if you if you've ever watched Kyle Pasquale's um uh, episode, it just came out today. Yeah, uh, sorry. He talked about I don't drink, but but if you're in Venjola party, you don't have a choice. You're drinking. Uh- I was a bit disappointed, yeah. And after our championship, it started raining afterwards, yeah, a bit. You know? But there were still people there, ten, uh, like camped out. But sayang, I wanted to see it. I, it wasn't <clears throat> as big as before. Before the whole Menjola was closed, it was like it. It was like Sinulog. The crowd was like Sinulog, and there was. A yeah, I heard so many crazy stories. Yeah, bro, we had a fire truck. <laughs> Yeah, fire truck. And then, okay, this is a story from my year, from my when I was graduating. So we were all pissed drunk. It was already three in the morning, two in the morning, and the police were telling us, "Ilan yun napong umuwe and all of that." And then one of my classmates, Kia Magadia, she said, "Walang uuwe hanggang walang nagbebedan him." Era the bed. The whole street starting to the bed and him in front of the police. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, so, and I'm like, did they stop drinking? No, they just continue drinking. Bro, I love, I love bed and the bed and him. Like outside Arneta, <laughs> you'll see a group of them out of nowhere just doing it. And then while I was after the championship, while I was walking inside um, Arneta Kubao. Yeah. Uh, Gateway Mall. I see people in in some random restaurant. Uh, around this, <laughs> everywhere you look, there's people like out of nowhere. <laughs> it all <laughs> only takes one of one of those alumni to just yeah, out of nowhere just pull it out, and everyone will start joining. It. It's so fun. It's yeah. so fun. It, I just the love the culture. Community. Is just crazy. It's it's crazy. Like, I always always tell us about guys. I want to tell this to you. My father during the third game, that final game. We were supposed to watch uh, together at uh, Lower Box because I couldn't get tickets. It was so hard to get tickets. Then, uh, while we were waiting for the game to start outside of Araneta, his batchmates called him. Hey, bro, we got one patron ticket and you can have it. He just left me. Like, Kuya, I'm going to go with my friends. You go alone. (laughs) And I told him, and I told and I told Danny when he told the story. Tandaan mo, anak ka lang, patron yun. <laughs> yeah, it was that crazy? And like Im- imagine if one of your friends came up to you, oh, I have a patron ticket. You would do the same. Like, okay. Then ka lang dad. Exactly. It's crazy kasi is it yung okay? Kay yung kwento ni Kyle sa last episode. It was so hard to get tickets that even Norman Black, coach Norman Black was having trouble finding tickets for his friends and family. Damn. So, some better, most, better some, games are crazy. Most of my tickets were. Um, I get most of my tickets as favors to the teachers to get on their good side. 
That's the secret secret tactic of a good student athlete. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're not doing so well in a certain subject? Oi, message again. Sir! Sir, may lower box pa ako dito. May lower, lower box pa lang ako dito. Baka gusto mo. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> yeah. I paid for most of my tickets myself. Hindi <laughs> mo, ito si Alex talaga. Pag kailangan mo ng tickets or anything booking, si, si Alex ang tatawagan mo eh. Kailangan nga, Alex eh. You know, I think I had extra tickets but that I couldn't use, so I just sold it to an alumni. <laughs> I think. For like the same price lang. Dude. Yeah, you should you should you should make that into a business or something. Like you got a I, crisis? I, I, I should have sold it. I, I should have become a scalper, not just sell it for ten times the price. <laughs> <laughs> yung go captain mismo yung isang scalper pala. <laughs> Tataka yung mga tao nandoon sa tapat ng Araneta, no? Tapos nang nang oh, bago ng game. <laughs> bago ng game. <laughs> may lower ako dito, may lower. I'll just be right outside also with everyone else. <laughs> It's like may lower pa ako dito, may lower pa ako. Pero <laughs> <laughs> sige, yung eto, may yung nakikita ko sa amin kanina. Ano yung gusto mo ikwento into the finals? that we sh- remind you about about the crowd uh with the crowd in the finals mm. hey, you told you told us something that you wanted to be reminded about oh Make no i forgot a very good yan alex <laughs> <laughs> i'm so forgetful uh the, there was another there was there, there's a side thing that i remember mm. um so i remember one of the games it might have been lp or mapua but The crowd was really against a certain ref. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like they were posting the number pa on social media. Na, ito number blah, 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 blah. I won't mention lang. But I remember Jacob was getting hit so much and the ref wasn't calling anything. And then Yukian was getting called for flops. And mm-hmm. I was standing pissed off the bench. And there were like 15 alumni from San Beda right next to the bench, also screaming at that ref. Yeah. And so I was looking at them like <laughs> Kaya na bala. <laughs> <laughs> And they were like two. game two like see you. Yeah. Game oh yeah, that one, that one. Like, Kaya na bala. And they were, they were saying pana. Kami bala after the game, after the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I was stressed out, but I was laughing on the bench. Oh my god. Trying to cover my face. Oh, oh. so good. Honestly, there's nothing like the Sunbeda crowd or the Sunbeda community in the context of basketball. Talaga. Grabe. Grabe yung pagmamahal din ng community. Especially, this was an emotional championship. I think that's the reason why you felt that way. Even though, yun, si six years mo sa Sunbeda, this was the most support. Kasi, it's been so long since we had an actual shot at winning. Yeah. So, iba eh. So, It, it, it's just so good, you know, how that went down. But, okay. Oh, I also remember now. Oh, okay, no. okay, okay. I got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know how I mentioned I'd rather be on the bench. Ah, uh, no. I'd rather be on the court than on the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. finals, man, Hopia was popping off. Mm-hmm. Like, insane yung performance ni Hopia, all right? So, I was riding the bench for most of the game. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind that. Um, I'll, I'll say a bit again after why I don't mind that. But Josh Tagala, we're, we're superstitious a bench. Eh? Okay, you mm-hmm. sat next to me game two, you sit next to me game three. Ganun. Mm-hmm. Game two and game three, with him next to me, half of the game, all I heard was first, first quarter, second quarter, it's a bit soft. But as mm-hmm. third and fourth quarter goes on, it becomes mm-hmm. louder. All I hear is, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, and he's just he's just looking down. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. But my feet though, shoot me on. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. By the fourth quarter, he's on his knees right next to me. Oh my god! In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, so loud. I was like, oh my god! I was getting so nervous listening to this guy. Oh my god! Lat <laughs> lat na lang feet though. In Jesus' name, someone shoots a three. Shut down, shut down. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Grab it, because you're so nervous on the bench. Wow! Like it's yeah. just like being being a spectator, lang. You get so nervous. Grab it. So, okay, I I also have some superstitions. Then whenever I watch, I, I think a lot of 
know alumni fans and students you develop your own superstitions eh? yeah like for me i i do not like wearing leather shoes whenever i watch a game like mag, i will find a way na maghanap ako ng ibang sapatos ayoko ng leather shoes yeah like i will find a way to wear kahit yung coaches socks. naman they have they have that then mm. uh i know that um whatever marker you use for game 2 Mm. That's the same marker you'll use for game three for the pregame, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. or whatever. However, you started a certain sermon before before the game in last game, blah, 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 like that. But everyone has their own superstitions. Can't you not superstitious? Mm. Just in case. Just in case. Wala sa yung. Pero natatawa ako kasi what if yung marker na yung ubusa ng ink habang Then you have to get they have to get the exact same brand. <laughs> I'm like oh shit and then like you're all superstitious o takbo ka to national sa labas ng Araneta bilis ganun bilis I think that happened actually that that did happen with us oh my but God. it's it's not my story to tell so <laughs> sino ganun. kaya sino kaya because <laughs> one of our um our our team referee had I remember he had to go rush somewhere in Moa or in our near Araneta to buy a marker a specific marker talaga ganun <laughs> <laughs> That's superstitious. I love it. I love those. So you know so, okay. it worked. So true, true. So Alex, at the clock was winding down. You guys were ahead, and you got Medjo and pop off. See Yuki yeah. in the fourth quarter. Rabe. Everybody was saying, you know, Rabe. What was it like as the, the clock was winding down, and you were realizing, oh shit, it's ours. Well, I remember I got <clears throat> I got mad at two of our players that was on the bench because right. they were celebrating with three minutes left because we, we already had a pretty comfortable lead. Mm-hmm. But I got I got mad. I was like, because I didn't want to like jinx it, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was like sh- shouting at them, like, "Hey, the game's not over!" Like, mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, sorry, like, shut shut up, the game's not over. Sit back, mm-hmm. sit back down. Like, uh, and then I couldn't get mad anymore because by the time there's one minute left, the alumni's behind the bench. We're like grabbing me in the shoulders, like Alex, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get mad at them. <laughs> you know? They were like, they were like saying, like, oh Alex, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump here, I'm gonna jump here. I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to focus the okay. game, but the alumni were so ready to rush the court. Yeah. And then when it finally happened, yeah, I, got back, I sprinted, just hugging everyone, and man, like surreal, talaga. It was insane. Um, seeing Peter on the floor crying, like, like knowing how much he sacrificed. Seeing Jacob with his family cramping up. Yuki, who was just like, um, you know, he, Yuki was one of our most consistent performers. But he's the guy that he doesn't get um, appreciated as much as the rest. But one hundred percent, he's the backbone of that championship. Like one hundred percent, because not so not just the scoring, but just yeah. the fact that he spreads out the floor so much. And Yuki's so smart; he's like any coach's dream player, basically. Yeah. So like, yeah, it was it was insane. Like just having everything come together, and us peaking at the right time, and playing so as well as we did in that in that end. And yeah, in the end, I I think Mapul had no answers no man, anymore. Mm. Yeah, you, like, can't, you, can't, you can't beat James Payosing after a full chicken chicken after chicken, full chicken dug out, Bro, full chicken like, dug out you. Half time a two piece chicken joy, like you can't stop him, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's fueled up. Maybe in the second quarter, last minute, he'll be tired now. By the time third quarter starts, he's back to full gas na naman. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Pala chicken joy, you know, whole chicken, <laughs> roasted chicken, chicken joy, there's, whatever. There's always food in the dugout ready. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so how special was that championship for you? Mag flashback balahat nung when that buzzer sounded all that years na you spent in San Beda. Yeah. Yeah. Something that I was always thinking about is um, because we keep hearing. 15 finals appearances in the past 17 years something like that right mm-hmm. um before it, that was leading to season 94 uh 15 and 17 so 
and out of those, we've won so many championships. So I was thinking to myself, nah, in every player who's played at least five years, all of them have at least one championship, mm -hmm. right? You won't find so many players in San Bernada that played four or five years in San Bernada and they've never won. It's so hard to find. I didn't want to be the first one in a long time. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, in season 93 with Silla Robert, I was a reserve. Mm -hmm. I, was list I was in the reserve list together with Peter. Mm -hmm. So I don't count that as my championship. Although I was training with the team A at the time and you know, I was the scouting team and everything. I don't, I don't really, I don't count it. So, you know, that, that one being finally my championship where I was a part of it, you know, I'm just happy that I'm not the malas that I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah. yeah. And honestly, I, I, I feel that you guys really, I gotta think we we both of us, me and Danny, gotta think this team. You you guys particularly, I say, you guys made watching the Red Lions fun again. Yeah, it it was. I'm not saying back then, you know, <clears throat> struggle years, nothing wasn't fun, but it was a difficult watch. I say there was so much turmoil going on on the court and off the court. We were not even able to talk about it. But you know, it's But. Yeah. I was just so happy with this team because this team honestly exceeded expectations of everyone and um, so happy for them. So, okay. Ito, nakapag-championship ka na, nakapag-bonfire ka na, nakapag-misa ka na lahat. Uy, masaya siya. Siya yung nakikita ko eh. Di ba yung oh. Sponge Cola. Siya yung talaga nag enjoy nung concert. Oo, pares. Ano eh. Yael, Yael fan pala eh. Oh. Um, <laughs> I was just watching Josh Tagala screaming the lyrics. Like, he knew the song talaga and it was going crazy. It was so funny to watch. <laughs> I was just vibing that entire time, bro. I was just like taking in everything na like the whole experience. Wait, it was so good. May picture pa nga yata ako boy. No, eh. Talagang sobrang vibe na vibe ni Alex yung game na yun. Wait, I'm gonna look for it. Pero, yun nga, Alex, eh, no? Uh, bago ka ba nagahanap tong si Danny nung picture na yun? Uh, siguro tanong ko, eto na, tanong ko na to. Itatanong ko na to. Sis, andito na tayo sa almost... Wala, ayan, no? Tingnan mo, sino yun? Yeah, that's my hair. <laughs> Bye, pa. Yeah. Ikaw lang may ganyang buho <laughs> sa buong team. Ikaw lang. I haven't cut um, my hair. That, I think that's also another superstition. Like since uh, since the season started, I didn't cut my hair anymore. Up to now, I haven't cut it. <laughs> no. Oh, okay, naman bagay naman. You keep winning with it. Eh. Malay mo magamit mo yan sa hell divers. Ooh, <laughs> <I did. laughs> yeah, Pero, you're saying sorry. So I'm gonna ask it now. So now that the season is over, <clears throat> what are your plans? Uh... I think halfway through the season, I already knew that it would most likely be my last season. Okay. So I have one more year eligibility, but with with me being so uncertain the entire time with basketball and graduating <clears throat> academic uh, academically, I'm I'm gra I just graduate. I'm gonna file tomorrow actually to get my diploma. Um, I decided na. I had such a special time with that batch and I got an opportunity to work abroad. I don't see myself playing professionally. Mm -hmm. And it's not the fact that parang um I can't do it or I don't believe in myself. It's just it's just that I want something stable. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the Basketball professional life is for me. So, hola, I'm not coming back for season 100. But I'm not worried uh, for the team because the team B is insane. We have so many players na, you know, that are really good. Um, and I'm still with the team every day. Um, I, I just live here in 5th Street. <laughs> Just in the side side street, 
we're at Nexus and Beta. So I'm there every day. I join every every practice and I'm just helping out as much as I can. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Damn. We're gonna miss you, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean <laughs> Ikaw nagaharap ng stability. Kami, kami rin naman na. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Pucha, ang dami umalis eh. Yeah. yeah. Pero ano, tama ba yung yeah, chismis na lumabas? Na, na, tama ba yung chismis na lumabas? You're going to Canada. Oh. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Di ba? Uh, <laughs> I don't know who I said. I told someone that I'm going to Australia. And then, I don't know. It's like, What do you call that? The, the that game where you pass the message. Oh yeah, <laughs> Segura. That's where it went all like wrong. Yeah, Australia. I'm going to Australia, Sydney. Oh. Oh yeah, I'm probably gonna be joining the sub sub group chat, the sub Facebook uh, group page in Tunay Kambiri stuff for uh, bed dance in Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> And you're gonna you're gonna be playing in the in the alumni leagues there instead. Yeah, the Western Sydney Basketball Association. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, like um, when when Payo Singh um re- recommitted to us, uh, mm-hmm. the uh, you guys posted a graphic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some of my friends over there in Sydney made a similar graphic. Now Alex Visser commits to play in the uh, Sydney <laughs> Basketball Association, <laughs> Filipino Basketball <laughs> Association. Uh, cracked up. <laughs> So yeah, you heard the please send us that. Yeah. Please send us the graphic. We will post it. Uh okay, gagawa kami ng amin na uh, <laughs> Alex Vesser commits for the West <laughs> to the West Sydney Basketball Association. We're happy for so, you, Matt. Like I guess it's a dream job of yours na yung makukuha mo doon. Like Yeah, it's it's just the experience as well. Um kind of going out of my comfort zone. I've always wanted to try living abroad mm-hmm. and because I, i you know i've lived in my whole life and i feel like it would be a good experience um i'm not i'm not australian i'm i'm half dutch so going there won't be easy for me because i have to work hard and you know to try to get a uh, permanent residency and visa and everything i just got my visa granted like a month ago um i'm booking my flight after this <laughs> I'm booking my flight and then tomorrow I'm gonna uh, apply for my diploma so yeah everything's happening happening really quickly and that's why I wanted to do the interview now now that everything's pretty much certain yeah uh, dang. well gotta be honest I, I, I am a big fan and thank you but rain pala for using for allowing us to be the ones na, to break this news officially from you yeah you're you're going to be leaving the San Beda Red Lions and so percent man you guys have been so on top of it like with all the fake news with uh, you know what happened with Jacob and then the, all the fake news with Pi and everything you guys have been so on top of it keeping everything factual and accurate so you guys are doing great so Thank i appreciate you. that as well For the community, Thank you. for, for the community, yeah. well, we I can't I play, <laughs> so this <laughs> we can do. <laughs> the best thing we could do is like you know debunk fake news. Yeah, but honestly, one of the things that's important for us, because this podcast, this is to really let players speak for themselves and not let people drive their let net don't let other people drive their own narrative, and yeah, but <clears throat> people. Players are people, and players deserve to be heard, and players should be able to be listened to. So, so I mean, we want to give them that platform, and yun yung gusto namin dito with with our own little platform. Na yun nai, kasi uh, for the longest time, pag may malay, bash bash si player, bash bash si coach, and mm-hmm. then the player and the coach can't say shit. Sasabihin na lang, oh no, pag mo nang pansinin. Sa amin naman, parang, I know what it's like. Kumbaga, may idea ako how it's like for people not to be able to defend themselves when you're, when you're being attacked like that. And I want that for other people. Like, yeah, sobrang importante sa amin. And sobrang thankful kami na you guys appreciate it. 
Um, we are super super appreciative of you guys of sa tiwala niya sa amin. But yeah, sobrang thankful kami na dito, dito ka nag-announce. Um, so ayun. Um, ikaw, Danny, may tanong ka pa? Ah, oh, yeah. Meron pa. Ito, isa na namang chismis na ide-debunk. <laughs> Kasi, oh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, sabi ko nga, my girlfriend's from Cebu. So, I just came from Cebu. Kumain kami sa Cafe Laguna. Then, pagbalik ko ng Manila, may nakita ako. Sabi ko, alam ko yung restaurant na yun, eh. <laughs> Kumain ako dun, eh. Tapos, kilala ko to. Tricks pa nga kita, eh. Yeah. So, ano to, bro? Tell us about this. Yeah, because I was gonna go to Dumaguete anyway, and then I heard that um, was Jude is going to Cebu to you know scout basically. So I offered na to go with just because I'm Bisaya and I, I was gonna visit my brother there anyway. But for those of you watching, with that player, nothing is confirmed yet. Okay, just so you know. Um, but yeah. I think some something to be excited for the man. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, player uh, uh, Anta store. Ganda ng mga jersey ng ano, Sacred Heart doon. Naka display. Eh. We were I think we were there so opening when we went to Cebu last year. And hmm. I was th- uh, and then I was thinking na ah oh, but walang visor dyan, no? Ayun na, eh. Dapat meron. <laughs> Anta. <laughs> Anta, baka yeah. naman. Baka na, may visor. Baka naman. Na, na. But then, yeah, crazy. Uh, crazy that Anta's all the way there now. And the schools, the, my high school is well supported. Yeah. Um, Sacred Heart is like an insane program as well, bro. Like, I know. They've been yeah. so consistent. Coach uh, Romel Rasmo. Yeah. Um, Thanks to thanks to his system, I was able to come to San Beda fairly easily because mm-hmm. they teach Manila basketball ahead of time. Grabbing Sistema. And their players now are also mm-hmm. so smart and talented and they're picking up on uh, Ateneo system, Ateneo de Manila system as well. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I mean, look at you. Did you, you watch the, no? Did you watch Palada Sasafi game? The, uh, the, the championship? Yeah, the championship, the last one. Yeah, I watched it um online, and then th- that's another reason, pala, why I was I was pretty okay with us losing game one. Because mm-hmm. Sasafi, <clears throat> they lost game one. Mm-hmm. They won. They won everything. Mm-hmm. UAP lost game one, won everything. So with us, I was like, oh, my trend. Mm. <laughs> Oh, that was a that was a really good game though. Not gonna lie. Grabe, grabe si bahay, no? Grabe. Baka naman ka, pwede mo kausapin. <laughs> Wala na 'yun. Tabal bin na 'yun. <laughs> right. I think I think all the alumni have to reach into deep into their pocket if you want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sige. Yeah, uh, pero bro, ang daming ang daming kong gusto sa 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 both teams <clears throat> ngayon actually. Just the quality of games sa Cebu is really top notch. And yun, may pumutok din yung ulo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sa game na yun. May pumutok yung ulo. So, grabe. Um, oh, that, that kid is good too, si Roata. Alex, uh, sobrang, again, thank thank you for giving us the time and giving us the opportunity to break this n- news to yeah. everybody about you leaving and sharing us your story um throughout your basketball life we remember from that kid na umiyak sa bobong ng sacred heart now you're pursuing your dreams and pursuing another life um lilipat ka na naman lilipat ka na naman yeah. this time going to sydney yeah. australia paying for your the west <laughs> the west sydney basketball west sydney so, basketball so, 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 oh kailangan may ano yun na may picture yun na may jersey signing ka ganun oh, no. may ganun yun. okay <laughs> let's let's relax <laughs> Uh. <laughs> They're better joke lang. Um. Anyway, um, Alex, we're gonna give you the floor. Um, if you have anybody to thank the the, the community or the team or whoever, um, yeah, floor is yours. Also, a message, Shana, for the Bisaya players or the players outside of Metro Manila who who want to you know 
eventually We're considering yeah considering uh, you go to Manila and play yeah <clears throat> yeah for for those players that are outside of Manila uh most of the guys that are playing here in Manila come from the province so it's not it's not parang mission impossible to play in the UAP or NCA it's it's just like you know working hard and putting yourself in a position to be successful coming here and yeah for my message to the San Beda community like it's been an insane journey mm-hmm. and so very thankful ako na I was be able to be part of it the culture is insane and I don't think I'll I'll ever see another school with that similar culture where if you're in Los Angeles looking for someone who sells bricks you're going to go to the Tunay Kambidis and ask any bedans in the area that can supply you know like mm-hmm. the fact that the bedans are always out to help each other it's it's so crazy to see and mm-hmm. i'm just glad na despite all the things that happened throughout the season i think we were able to help bring the community together as well despite the fact that we we made people and generations fight <laughs> In the end, like you could see it, the man in the championship game, <clears throat> everyone was there and you know supporting towards this uh, single goal, and it was so good to see. Um, I also want to use this opportunity that you guys are giving me uh, for the for players who um, to showcase the importance of education, because mm. you guys say, the man, that I'm I'm. You guys kept hearing I'm very academic, blah, 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 blah. And then Jacob said, does Alex even go to class? <laughs> right? <laughs> Which, in, to fair, in fairness to Jacob, I, I only had three subjects for the last sem. Mm-hmm. And that are actually my course. So that's why he never sees me go to class. But yeah, um, it's really important to give yourself parang other options and other opportunities. If I didn't take my study seriously, I would not have this opportunity to go abroad. And I would have no other option than to do my best and play basketball. No matter how passionate I am about it or if my knee hurts or like the harsh reality is that basketball is not forever. And putting yourself in a position where you can choose or give yourself a choice or give yourself the option to be successful elsewhere if basketball is not for you or if you maybe want to do something else i think it's really important so all those players that come to good schools that value education like san beda take advantage of it because it's so important down the line because when we were in the us and we met with these bedans and some are former players there are so many horror stories na you finish playing you play professional you play five six years you get injured or you get cut what will you do then right you're 31 32 years old with zero job experience and you weren't able to save so much then you have to start all the way back from zero you know so having a degree is so important for that uh for that so yeah i just wanted to use you know the platform that you guys are giving me to share this Advocacy. For Miss Philippines. But yeah. Pwede, pwede. Yeah, that's oh. pretty much it. But yeah, it's it's been an insane journey and I appreciate you guys and everyone in San Beda. Like I will still be here until June. And mm-hmm. I will still be giving my best to help the team succeed all the way until June. So if you guys I'll see you guys later as a game. It's a soccer game, football game. Oh, yes, if you guys are going, I will be there. Yeah, I I'll will be see watching you there. the game. I will. Sh- I'll be I'm, there. I'm pushing. Oh wait, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. I'll be. But this I'm, episode I'll will be pushing be... some of the. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be pushing some of the players to go as well, just to help support. Uh, team support teams, right? Yeah. So yeah. Oh, that's um, plug. Plug Corin dito. Um, the student council also just informed us that they will be providing. Bus, buses, transportation. Tega, or... tega. Tapos na yung game pag kailabas sa episode na to, so. <laughs> Hindi pa. Ayon nga no. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Oh, but yeah, sayang. Pero yun. We'll make that announcement na lang. Yeah. Oh, we'll make that announcement na lang. Anyway, 
Um, anyway, Alex, thank you so much for giving us the time. I appreciate um, you guys. I, we won't hold you for too long. Uh, um, but yeah, that's it, guys. Um, this is Upper Box Podcast with me, huh? Danny, and Alex. Wait, lang, so na, you know, sa dumagete mga pagtimpura tayo. <laughs> <laughs> Masarap yung tipura doon sa gabi. Anyway guys, sige. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Alex. Thank you, Paolo. See you guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Okay.